Hello and welcome to our final episode of Ten Candles Eclipse. Ten episodes, 40 people. You are the last four at our table under a red moon. <laughs> <laughs> this world sucks. It's, Jake, I'm so sorry. These two know because they've been watching. They've uh -huh. been, you know, TJ and Denise, you've been behind the scenes just as much as you are in front of the camera now. Al Quinn, you started this whole damn thing, so you have I've no been excuse. Here. But Jake, you're just an innocent bystander <laughs> Look, of this poor process. I've never, oh, well, I'm very excited, though. Okay, I've great. never looked forward to dying more since, uh, the, like, the last time I got food poisoning. <laughs> so, like, I'm very, like, I'm like, let's do it. Ready to go. Yeah. Well, I don't think you could be in a worse circumstance as Probably far as not. where the world is right now. Like, they've been worse running than food poisoning? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty bad. Uh, you didn't have this food poisoning. <laughs> it's it's devil eggs, wasn't it? No. Okay. It was so they were when they came out. <laughs> <laughs> you thought they were. The human body right. corrupts an egg like yes, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Sulfur eruptions. Sulfur eruptions. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Because of Same the kind of thing. Yellowstone yeah. supervolcano. Right. Um, also deviled eggs. Mm -hmm. So, um, Yeah, no, it's not even just the supervolcano right it's now, sad. but we've got uh, rock hails, uh, hail Rock hails that are also rocks. <laughs> um, still, the title at this point, the title surges are like, yeah, whatever. At this point, yeah, that's the easy. That's stuff. the that easy. Was, stuff. That was a couple weeks ago problem. Yeah, no, the the current problems are pretty much the world is blanketed out. There's either rock, ash, or sulfuric acid, um, literally blocking the sun everywhere. And what you can see is just a. A, a moon-stricken horizon. You left out all the cool monoliths. Uh, well, the monoliths are uh, now pretty much a forever <sighs> staple in the world of where we are today. I am impressed at just what has transpired over the course of these 10 episodes and how each group has basically handed some sort of Fuck to each person going down the road. <laughs> it's the official. Thanks, everybody. Terminology. Right. Yes. It's in the rule book. <laughs> it's it's it is it is the first two letters with a dash, mm -hmm. and then the last two letters, to really to really get into the deep of it. Yeah. But um, it's all in here, and I've written out all of the miserable things that have happened to all of you. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, up to this point. Your little black book of My pain. Little black book of pain, <laughs> um, which I'm looking forward to disseminating. More uh, when we get farther into the post oh, series wrap up of this. Um, some of these are just bad. Some of these are like, my notes are awful. It's like underground. Great. That's good. Yeah, yeah. good. Good note. Good note taking. Yeah. Yeah. But some of them, <laughs> if authorities found it, you would be questioned. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mostly, yeah, the, yeah. mostly my favorite one is they are destroying each other. Um, yeah, let me try to see if there's other ones. Oh yeah, here we are. There. Yeah, some of these are just spoilerific, so I don't want to get into them so hard. So, oh, this is another one. Um, yeah, Earth splitting apart. Yeah, that one's pretty pretty on the point as well too. Good. So good odds. Before we get to our final episode, we need to go through the process of defining our characters yet again. And as we discussed before, we chatted about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we didn't talk too much about your characters, mostly about the whole what, where, and why, which is vital for something like this. But uh, let's begin with our virtue. Take one of your lovely graphic photos of you, and then let's pass it to the left. But we don't write anything on it. Mm -hmm, not yet. Not, not there yet. You get it. And this one's for you, mm -hmm. and Queen. And this is the virtue. Yep. And what this is, so you're going to write the virtue, a virtue that uh, you look up to in someone, something that you want to aspire to be in this lifetime or the next. One word, or can it just be? A descriptive verb or adverb would be best, please. Okay. Adverb, not verb. You're not passionately doing much. Okay. But you are passionate, so. Hey, TJ. Hey, buddy. 
Here we are again. <laughs> yeah, I know. We started. So, TJ, for those of you who may have not seen the International Tabletop Day um, inciting incident. <laughs> <laughs> inciting episode. Inciting episode. But D and TJ, who are producers here, I had a production producers here, and uh, basically came on for International Tabletop Days, because it was like, hey, let's just run 10 candles, because that's a great idea. You know? Real pick-me-up. Yeah. Real pick-me-up on yeah. a day of board games. Uh, <laughs> you know? When Alquin, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Alquin, you're here. We had, Because of scheduling, um, we had to switch things around, because I think it was originally supposed to be the OG cast. Was yeah, yeah with Amy. But uh, Jake came in. Well, sorry to wreck that plan. As a pitch hit <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I was so excited to play, and then but Amy yeah, saw your name another one of the episodes, calls, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, but Amy wasn't was one of the episodes. That's one correct. of the earlier. Yeah, episodes. We really wanted yeah. to get her back so, in, and yeah. then. So that was the whole point of it. Some more behind the scenes curtained attitude. So let's take your virtues and pass them back to the right. There so. you go. And Jake, because you are my lovely outlier. Oh, okay. Why don't you, you describe? Can you pass this over first. to uh, Denise, please? What is yours? Uh, I am inspirational. Inspirational. I didn't know it had to be a real attribute. <laughs> you put a fake one? <laughs> Has lasers for eyes. Yeah. <laughs> what does tentacalicious mean? I don't know what that Oh, is. well. <laughs> That's, that means there's more appendages than what you're letting on at this point. Well, okay. all the fun out now. <laughs> yeah. For where, oh, why did you it's put it? It's going to be uh, some levity at the front. Uh, selfless. Selfless? Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's my virtue. You are selfless. I am. That makes, uh, okay. How well, about you, TJ? Tenacious. Tenacious. Mm -hmm. Inspirational, selfless, and tenacious. All right, yeah, seems like a very aggressive crew today. How about you, D? Pragmatic. Pragmatic. Mm. All right. You are practical in all senses of pragmatism. Mm. Good. All right, well, let's take another one of your cards and let's pass it to the right this time. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Pass that to D. I got it. <laughs> Look at that happy silver-haired boy. That's what the vice is going on. Um, yes, your vice. One. What would you like to put down that is something that creates more problems than it solves? It's a trait that you hope not to ever bring into your life or have yourself be surrounded by. But impossible to avoid, I would probably say. For it is human nature to have both virtues and vices which to live with. We aspire to lift one up while keeping the other one contained. Yes. But oh, what a disheveled world brings out in the both of us. Both sides of us. I'm just, gonna, just I'm gonna spell our this wrong. Selves. So I'm just, I'm sorry in advance. Well, then I may not even know what it means. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. What, what were you saying, Alquin? I think the the, the post apocalyptic stuff doesn't. Okay. It doesn't show uh, an alternate. It shows what we really are. Yeah. No, it's a. It is a. It is a bullshit stripper. Yeah. You know, as they say. Unfortunately, it causes a lot of it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was. Yeah. First. <laughs> this is a vice photo days. of I've ever <laughs> seen it That's why. That's why I used it. That makes me. Yeah, happy. and my virtue was my uh, graduation. Oh, picture. there you go. Well, what's your vice? My, oh, we'll pass it back. I am. I haven't. Oh, you're not finished yet. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. The AS. The ASMR writing is not complete. My <laughs> yeah, sorry. Fans at home. I've been. I've been loving uh, hearing people being like, "That is a satisfying sound." I know, right? Sharpies. Mm -hmm. I wish you could all you at hear home. the cap come off? <laughs> I only wish you could smell them. They're great. Yeah. This were 4D. <laughs> yeah, they're fuzzy. It's, I don't it's hate a, it. It's for grip. No. That's the point, is, is that it's a... Uh, it's good. The, I remember the first couple groups, when they were getting into it, they, they despised the um, nail-filed version of these, and I find it extremely comfortable. Uh, yeah. It is very fuzzy. Nice. I want some <laughs> underwear made Gritty. of that. You know, it's very this nice. This one goes back to you. <laughs> not, right? not of the markers, but yeah. Well, get careful. You have another eruption on your hands. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> All right, I, mean, I should mark you for that, but yeah, we'll, 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 we'll leave it be. So, you know, All right, so now straight at you. Yeah. So, I'm, are, are you good, D? Yes. Excellent. So, what is your advice, sir? 
besides fuzzy markers. Uh, <laughs> well, it's true. Insistent. Insistent. Mm -hmm. So in the point of where you will not let it let it lie. Unrelenting. I'm proud. Yeah. Unrelenting and proud. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, Alquin, what is yours? My vice was uh, addictive. Addictive. Yeah. Addictive and selfless. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting blend. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I don't care about myself so much. I just care more about other people. I think I'm a lost cause. Okay, fair enough. It's amazing <laughs> that you would have made it this long, not caring about yourself, but caring about others. But it makes there's a world in which that makes sense. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll explain that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you, TJ? Melancholy. Melancholy. That's a new one. Mm -hmm. Tenacious and melancholy. I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that is unique. Okay, fair enough. D? Stubborn. Stubborn. Right, a tried and true stubborn. So, I, thought it I went well with Did I ruin that. your character? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, no, it's actually interesting. Contradictions are are yeah. what make what make the world go round. Yeah, so. it's one of my we favorite parts of this seen, game. Actually, we've yeah. seen some really interesting contradictions. Yeah, yeah, I love that curveball. Okay. Uh, I thought stubborn went well with pragmatic. Yes. All right. Well, I I kind of already briefly introduced the module, but I'll go through the whole portion of it again. For those of you who've been sticking around um, and watching, you kind of know a little bit of what's going on. But monoliths rose three weeks ago and have been pinheading the entire Earth. Since then, tidal surges, earthquakes, hailstones of rock, creatures who have emerged from the ground, creatures who have been roaming around the ground. There have been unexplained tragedies all across the world. No communication has come from any true government official until now. Your story is probably going to begin as you are traveling in a repurposed medical barge that has been re... One of the few working ships that have managed to come up since we discussed there was an EMP that flattened everything in the planet, but this thing being primarily mechanical and being unhooked to a power source at the time, upon giving it a new power source, has been a very reliable source of refuge for weeks. And being out in international waters has pretty much saved you from a lot of the, well, uh, uh, I was going to say binary, but more like basic elements of what the world has been dishing out at this point between both tidal surges and earthquakes. <clears throat> You've been riding the waves, as they say. That being said, I think your story is going to begin, and we'll get into this before we, we'll get into our moments and things before we get into the story, but I have a feeling that you're going to begin your story after hearing some kind of call somewhere close to the equator, and you've been trying to zero in on the signal since then. So with that said, let's make some moments. Things that you hope to find and create during the story as part of your character in the process. This is for somebody else's character, not us. This is yours. Oh, this is ours. This okay. is a moment, so take one of your cards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and write upon it a moment. I will find hope, dot, dot, dot. And it can be anything. It can be in the simple pleasures of enjoying something one last time. It can be something much more grand scheme, such as finding the signal. Uh, it can be a very emotionally driven thing, like finding a quiet moment of prayer, or um, saving an innocent life. Uh, can even be something as small as just experiencing a Twinkie one last time. <laughs> oh man, I have I need a new picture now. Oh, Twinkie, <laughs> I'd go for a zinger. It's, it's a little more um, frosting involved. Mm -hmm. Ding yes. dong, yo, ding dong. <laughs> uh, chocolate Junior, tasty cake. I'm I'm a little Debbie man to be. Oh, honest. so I'm tasty cake. Oh, nutty bars. Any PA man. Oh, the nutty bars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <coughs> I am uh, have been pretty much living in the cherry pie category. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. I can't wait to hear Daryl say, of course your episode talked about snack cakes. <laughs> 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 I 
You can. You, I'm sure when you watch. Oh, you did watch this episode. You said I right? did. Yes. Yeah. So well, I guess this will just be comeback then. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> um, it was. Yeah. It was Jake's a fun revenge. Episode. Jake's revenge. Yes. <laughs> revenge of the Jake. Uh, well, in this process, as we explain each other's moments, or we explain your moments, I'd also like to know about your character a little bit. So we'll take this time to introduce to the table who you are, as well as what your moments are. Your moment is. D. Oh, hi. Hello. Good morning. Hello there. Um, my name is Ella Sanchez. Ella Sanchez. Ella? Ella. Got it. And I am a trauma surgeon. Trauma surgeon. I was part of the group that was um, put together to go out on this medical barge. Got it. Um, repurposed medical barge. On this repurposed medical barge. Actually, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be repurposed. It would just be recommissioned. Recommissioned. Yes. Uh, to find survivors. Got it. So I saw what happened initially on land and then got on this boat immediately right. thereafter. Okay. To try and find survivors. Um, what moment do you hope to generate in this story? I am not a real... I, d I don't make great connections with people. I've tried really, really hard. Okay. Um, so I will find hope when I make a meaningful connection. Meaningful moment. <laughs> All right, great. <clears throat> so why does she disconnect so much? Why is she so easy to <sighs> dislodge or dissuade people? Or is that something you would like to get into later? Well, I mean, uh, just... Briefly, on the surface, her career has not allowed her to be able to share that part of herself with people. I see. They haven't been able to to withstand descriptions of, of what it is that's going on, you know, emotionally, that kind of turmoil. She's carrying a lot with her, and it's between not being available physically... It's been difficult to right. be available emotionally mm -hmm. because of uh, because of being a trauma surgeon. Yes. Okay. All right. Duly noted. Uh, Alquin. Uh, my character is uh, Carter Portsmouth. Um, he is a uh, caregiver for his uh, old sick mother, uh, and also runs a small cat cafe. Got it. And I was on vacation uh, on a cruise, which I didn't really want to go on, but it was insisted upon. Uh, my mom won the cruise, uh, but was too ill to take it, so I went myself. Um, and then when the event happened, uh, you know, there were a lot of problems on our, our cruise ship, but we were eventually rescued by uh, Ella on her her other sh on the other ship, the ship that we're on now. Um, Your cruise ship capsized. Yeah. From one of the more vicious storms as a result of the first week of madness. Yeah. Uh, I did manage to... There was a lot of chaos when that happened. Um, I did manage to repurpose a, uh, a <clears throat> cooler into... Because I have discovered uh, Lola, who is a, uh, a very pregnant, very far along cat, who I've been taking care of, who is in basically a, like a... a like a cooler that I have drilled holes and stuff into to make into a sort of car uh, carrier. It's got little wheels, and she's in there with her blankets and stuff. And I've been taking care of her. Okay. And there was yeah. a bit of a there was a bit of a kind of a mutiny thing where a lot of the other people left. Uh, some people weren't really happy with the idea of going out to find what the signal was. Uh, I was one of the people who was barricaded in the bridge with uh, with Ella, uh, which we'll get into because I haven't. For, I've heard that. But now we can explain that into further. So at some point, uh, your recommissioned ship was uh, personnel divided between yeah. the discovery of the signal and the people who wanted to go and the people who wanted to, to leave. So right. the, these three, you three plus Ella, mm -hmm. were the ones that decided to hold up. My moment is that I will find hope when Lola has her litter of kittens safely. You want her to have her kittens. That's okay. all that really matters to okay. you right now. <laughs> okay. I love you. <laughs> all right. Um, glorious. Jake. Yeah. Uh, I am Kirk Upshaw. Kirk. Um, I am a uh, high school history teacher and a football coach. Right. And uh, I went on a cruise because my 
students and players gave me like a end of the year uh, gift that they wanted to send me on a cruise. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Um, They're well, I guess it is now. <laughs> I mean, I was excited about and the trip, but uh, your uh, but your your kids and yeah. your faculty literally went through the effort enough to go and give you something nice, right? Which is the reason you are alive today, right? And they are not, right? Um, so, um, but yeah, I uh, life turned out a little a little differently than I had anticipated, and sure. uh, uh, not just because of this cruise, but. Um, um, so as, as a result of um, just some uh, a, a pretty big hurdle that happened in my life mm-hmm. in college, uh, my moment is I will find hope when I regain the fearlessness I lost after my college injury. So you want to be able to do an extravagant feat that is reminiscent of your college days. Yes, and it's it's that mixed with um, I. Um, I find it easy to motivate other people, but I find it difficult to motivate myself. Um, okay. And I kind of all trace it back to that. All right. So this is some kind of, because if I'm reading you correctly, it's about you will find fearlessness, which means you will do something fearless. Mm-hmm. And it, it sounds like if it's based off of your college backgrounds as an mm-hmm. athletic individual, mm-hmm. it is doing some kind of either feat of strength or agility or, or selflessness to right. be able to find that to happen. I like that. I think that's fine. You want to, you want to feel like I used glory to. days. Yeah. One last time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, that's rough being, being given the gift that is both the, uh, your life and everybody else's demise, and as well as what's going on with your mom, if you don't mind me digging in a little bit more. Like, what are your feelings now that you know that your mom is not being taken care of because you were on the ship? I mean, at first I was really messed up about it, but then in a way I, I felt kind of relieved mm. because she's been, you know, she has dementia and all these other sort of issues, mm. and it, it's been hard on me watching her deteriorate. Right. And I feel awful that she's probably dead at this point Mm -hmm. um, without me being there to care for her. Right. So on one level, I feel kind of guilty about that. Yeah. Um, Then one of the things I was worried about when I went on this cruise was that that would happen. Mm. But then I also feel like I've also been spared seeing that and I don't have that in my memory bank. Got it. It's been something that you've been spared of. I'm kind of I'm kind of grateful for it. And then I feel guilty that I feel grateful for that again. So it's this kind of cycle. It's a bit of a cycle. Um, TJ. <clears throat> um, my name is Howard Bell, but everyone calls me Howie. Uh, I was, or am, uh, was, I guess is probably more accurate now, uh, the owner and operator of a small game store in a small town in northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, my wife and I started the business together. It was a big dream of ours to do that. Uh, unfortunately, about six months in, um, there was an accident at the shop, and uh, she slipped while mopping the floor one night and hit her head and fell into a coma. Uh, passed away a few days later. Oh wow! Six so, months ago. Yeah. So well, that was uh, six months into owning the business. Into owning the business. Uh, I've been running the shop uh, for about four years. After that, keeping wow. it going in her memory, it's it's rather successful for or was successful for a small town thing, but when you're in a small town, there's a lot to do. do. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to give the community a place to come and gather and and be a community and have fun and and find joy and happiness. Right. And since her death, it's been, um, you know, my goal to to keep her her joyous memory alive through the game store. Got it. Um, When everything happened, I I ended up on the cruise ship because she'd always wanted to take a cruise. I, I find myself now kind of living the life that she would have lived with me, right? Um, doing the things that she wanted to do, right? And, uh, that's why I was on the cruise ship um, to try to, you know, once again reconnect with this person I'd lost years prior. First um, vacation in four years, yeah, kind of a situation. Finally got the business to a place where I could hire some help. It's just been me. Just been walking, and you um, walked away from it for a little bit. Yeah, just for a week, just to get on, get out of, get out of Dodge, go try to put some semblance of my life back together. Mm. Um, now that the life we'd created is stable, uh, wanted kids, weren't able to have them. Hmm. Uh, that was a, that was another bit of a disappointment. But uh, 
So you got picked up. I got picked up. Yeah. With these other two. Yeah, I was I was on the on the cruise ship when that all happened. So I've got gotten to know these two pretty well. Um, what was a what was a particular? Was there a moment of revelation on the water while you were dangling in the cold Pacific Ocean, or either in a life raft, or as with many times when you're in a life raft, it's not dry. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some kind of water table that's existing under there a little bit, so cold and mm -hmm. wet and dealing with it. Was there something there? Well, yeah, when I was there, I mean, first off, I, I only have a few things that really matter to me and they're mm -hmm. all with me. There's um, uh, my wife's favorite set of polyhedral dice, which Got I it. carry with me everywhere. Uh, a deck of cards that we, um, on our first date, I got sick, and I was going to miss the date, and I felt really upset about that. And she came over and surprised me, and we played cards all night. Got it. So I kept that deck of cards. There's a photo in the middle of that deck of cards of her. And finally, there is a, a journal uh, and a pencil in which I've been... We always, beyond the game store, we thought we would write our own RPG. Yeah. So I have we, we started this journal, got about halfway there, and... Since then, I've been slowly adding to it, finishing our world and building this place where we could live. Um, and that on the on the boat, that's when I realized that that is the most important thing to me. I was wrapped that in plastic. Yeah, it, it was with like against my chest at all times. Like, it's become my source for for life. Is, like it is, is that is that I I'm hearing that this is turning into a moment. This is my moment is to finish uh, finish the story, finish the RPG that I'd started with my wife. Finish. It's it's almost there. It's just the last few pages that need to get hemmed up. See? All right. And then we'll be done. I hope it's a happy one. It is. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. No grim dark in this RPG, yeah, please. No. No. Thanks, uh, thanks, Stephen Dewey. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> okay, great. Well, then those are all of our moments that we have laid out. And then finally, we have the brinks. So the brinks are what um, I will participate with you in this process of putting together. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's take another card. And let's pass it to the right. So, send this over to Denise. Now, Jake. Mm -hmm. is it? <laughs> don't say, don't, <laughs> 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 don't look at me and say my name like that. It's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's are you good? Yeah, yeah, good? yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I just yeah. peed a tiny bit. Okay. What are you going to say to me? Uh, we get to participate in part of this process a little bit. Good. I get to work with you and same over here. TJ knows what's up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Denise is going to write a brink for you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. You're going to... I'm going to write one for You're going to write one, Denise. Yeah. Uh, so you will be writing a, I have seen you, dot, mm -hmm. dot, dot, and this is a moment of which you have observed that has been their lowest of low, mm -hmm. something that they have resorted to in the most awful way. Uh, at the same time, since I have yours, I will be writing something that they have seen you do. Mm. Right? They have seen you dot, dot, dot. Uh -huh. Now, I'm doing this because normally, and I'm sure some people have noticed by now, normally Brinks go to the right, you know? But for this last game, I want to mix it up a little bit <laughs> and just change because I've been so tired. Uh, no offense. Um, but it's mostly about the position of inside of here, too. It's like this side of the table has had an opportunity to um, to deal with the nastiness that I have dished down. You get to write for them this time around. And this is something I've seen them do. I have seen them, dot, dot, dot. And this can be about the monoliths. This can be about the creatures. This can be about the world. This can be about the moon. Um, mm -hmm. however you want to lay out into it. But okay. decided for this last session. Thank you. I will do something a little different, mostly for my own sanity, if not incorrect on the rules okay. sense of things. So. <clears throat> and it's a bad thing, right? It should be a, a bad thing? It should be something... That is a brink. It is a, a, a lowest point of their human nature. It doesn't have to be something that they've done. It can't be that they have done a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Like that's a pretty common misconception. It's not like they, you have committed murder or anything like that. It's just a weakness. Mm -hmm. Like a very strong weakness that has come as a result of your observation. 
And, you know, again, a great example they put into the book can be something where I've seen you lose it over this dead dog. That doesn't mean that you killed the dog. It doesn't mean anything other than you just lost it over this moment that happened. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it can be inspired by terrible acts, but it can also just be, well, a weak moment. You know, whatever that means to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Spelling is so bad. It's hurting. <laughs> like hurting it. You got it. Got it. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> Believe in yourself. <clears throat> Confidence is not my uh, virtue. <laughs> in, in real life or in this game. <laughs> <laughs> this is not bad. This is totally something that I would do. Oh. <laughs> it's good, though. It's good. I see you. You got that in there. Thank you. Well, it was hard to write for in this one. <laughs> What is what is what, what is, is what is what is a bad thing that a selfless person does? <laughs> Nothing. They're selfless. <laughs> it's like a tick. Yeah. That's you great. Read it? Not We're not supposed to read them out loud, right? <laughs> no, nope. not to everybody else. No. That's great. And the hope goes on the bottom, right? The the brink goes into the bottom. Oh yeah. What's what's the right. order of these? How should they be stacked up? You can put them in any order you wish of moments, virtue, and vice. The brink must go in the bottom. Brink on the bottom. Okay. Virtue. Of those four, though, our character stuff goes on the bottom bottom? The, your character, your, your, character your last blink one can just be off to the side, yes. But the order of these is important, because... Right. The hope goes in the stack, too, yeah? Or no? I don't remember now. The hope does go in the stack. Hope goes in the stack. Yes. I think. I don't like how much thought you're putting into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got, you got to min-max this. The brink. <laughs> that final episode, right? <laughs> go for broke. That's right. We're going to break this game. We're going to win. That's right. It'll be different this time. Yeah. <laughs> Easily. Oh, yeah, man. we've done this before. Let's yeah. ask the other 36 how that went. <laughs> I did not prep any Kleenex on this one. The first one. This is a red I'll just, shirt. You're yeah, just I'll just a... blubber into... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. fine. Oh, this is thick. It's we'll, nice. We'll, we'll, we'll be mutual blubs mm-hmm. over here. On that one shot, literally, I mean, it... Like, stop. I don't think anybody could see it, which is probably good, but there was like liter- there was mucus coming out of my nose. It, I was crying so much. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> the snot bubble. Great. Yeah, yeah that shirt, just you just throw that shit out of it. Tear it up, maybe use it for a Yeah, well, I told her before, this used to be white. That's why I wore that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time on that cruise ship. Yeah. <laughs> and all your other clothes are red. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Quinn, at this table, you've sat with Ivan the most. Do you still get nervous? Because I know I'm a little nervous right now. You know, I used to, but uh, besi- if you don't, it, I, we're actually one for one. I have killed Ivan uh, in, a, in a game we played together at Gen Con. Oh, good for you. And, nice. Yeah, so that's a, that's yeah, a bu- bucket list. Did that. And uh, you killed me in the, the, the International Tabletop Day 10 Candles. So we're actually even yeah. so mm-hmm, far. Mm-hmm. Hi, Diane. I choked you to death. I was a synthetic. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That was the, yeah. that was the last. That was the last. Yeah. Thing that that was, I choked the life out of you. We went we went back and forth, rolling and injuring each oh, other. Yeah, that was that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. That well, was... l- let me ask you, what do you think is more frightening and unpredictable, sitting at a table with you mm-hmm. as the game master, mm-hmm. or sitting at a table with me as a host? Uh, honestly, and I I, th- I mentioned this a few times before, but I'm. I am terrified as a player. I do. I have a tough time playing. So I, uh, I literally am. Sometimes my decision making uh, capacities will sometimes fall apart when I'm at a table as a player. But this, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> How you doing? No, I'm fine. <laughs> That's you. It's okay. It's uh-huh. fine. We're we're, fi- we're fine here. H- how are you? Tasty? 
<laughs> Tasty for the last one. I like it. There you go. I like it a lot. I think I'm pretty sure the show is actually a comes in handy sometimes. I'm not saying I didn't intentionally sit myself next to Ivan, but when it was suggested I didn't have to, I went for it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. What an honor, Jake. What? I, Who said that? You know, <laughs> to be the exception. Yes. That's great. Today's a good day to die. Yeah. Uh, great. I'm just writing down the brink. I mean, I've actively chosen to be sat in fifth chair or next to Ivan or other things like that. So you should look danger in the face and laugh. That's right. Well, Fearless. That's, that is my moment. You've already hit <laughs> your moment. <laughs> well, Sitting hey. at this table. Let me put that first. Get some hope time. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. um, Starting with 15. Starting mm-hmm. with yeah, context for the, the choking me out. Um, so Al Quinn did... <laughs> I don't uh, think you need to qualify that. <laughs> no, no, it's just, it's fair. Um, we did the Alien RPG. Yes. Yeah, which oh, is what that so was. Awesome. Which I went pre-ordered immediately afterwards. Yeah, um, and it is a wonderful game. But that was... Uh, situation in which in the story he was revealed to be the synthetic and I revealed him so his he decided to reveal himself by just like just putting well, Alex against was the wall. scanning for the synthetic on the derelict ship yeah, not me their synthetic yes I popped up and we were in the room together it was one of those like sir sir because I was the captain it's like sir the synthetics in the same room as you and then <laughs> so, and you like you were like blowing my face off, yeah. like you were shooting me in the face, and yeah. I'm, I'm a synthetic, so I'm just standing there, yeah. you know, just like putting a gun singular in, purpose, putting a gun in his ribs and just unloading the clip. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's not this game. Hashtag synthetic life, is, yeah. Yeah. or is Synth it? Life. That's what you want. Yeah, know. <laughs> uh, the power of role playing games, y'all. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I almost. I put mine in order upside down, and then I flipped them over. I was like, whoops, that's not how that's supposed to go. <laughs> no, no li- li- that, is, that is yours. So I think we're going to begin your story, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, very shortly after you discovered there is a repeating signal. And you've, at this point, have traveled into the middle of the Pacific Ocean, knowing that the more out and away from the water you are, the less difficult the the waves are. And, you know, there's been so much tremors and aftershocks at this point. You're able to ride out most of the major um, surges that are coming in, but as soon as you get too close to the shore, that's when the water breaks and just starts making it a real tough time for the boats. And this is something you've learned through trial and error unfortunately. And are there monoliths out in the water, in the open water 100%. too? 100%. Okay. Yes. They are uh, pinheaded, like I said, all over like, the world. Are they like a grid? Are they in like a geometric formation? Since you're out in the water, you would see that there is absolutely a regular pattern. To okay. Them. Yes. So um, geometric would be hard to see unless you were observing it from space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? But uh, they definitely are consistent. Like, wherever you look on the horizon, there is one, if not a couple. And whenever you feel like you're past one, there's another one right on the right in front of you. And they're like the size of skyscrapers. Mm-hmm. Are they featureless in any way? Or? Featureless, yeah. black, sheer facing things. They're just like big rectangles. And in this basically. circumstances, what you've been seeing is, is that um, the monoliths have come up. And it doesn't matter how deep the ocean is, mm-hmm. they all are pretty consistently the same size. Okay. Um, above the, wa- of, above, above the, the, the water. water? Right. That's yeah. terrifying. Uh, and I think your story will begin shortly after you have heard through the crackle of static, which has um, been mostly prevalent this entire time, and the occasional terrifying hum of creatures or voices singing inside of the radio, you've managed to pick up one repeating signal that has given you coordinates and has ostensibly just said uh, the last refuge, the last stand is, is here. Come to us and this is the last opportunity for you to find safety. Nowhere else is safe. And this has been on a repeating signature for most of it. You picked up the edges of it through the static and you have been trying to hone in on it because unfortunately, um, navigation has not been accurate or good for you because 
no stars yeah. to deal with. So rather than like trying to pinpoint it directly of where things can be, you have been just been trying to get to where the signal is strongest and go towards that direction as much as you possibly can. And shortly after the discovery of this signal, um, <laughs> the, your other fellow refugees on the boat, uh, I think we discussed, decided that they didn't want to go to such a thing. Yeah, they um, they unified under this guy Hooker who was uh, a used car salesman, I guess, or something. Mm -hmm. But apparently they all they all thought that he had a, the better, a better idea of how to run a ship than, than Ella did. Well, um, our crew tried to uh, hold them off because they tried to take over. Yeah, and, uh, they tried to rush the, the bridge. Mm -hmm. A lot of them didn't make it and we barricaded ourselves inside the bridge and with nothing left to do they decided to just steal the last of the lifeboats and flush off with and all of your supplies yes yeah. so so now it's just is it just the four of you is there anyone left on the boat we might not we be don't. totally sure not that we so. know of but you know that it's just the four of you in the bridge well, five, County Lola. County Lola. Mm. Uh, it's the four of you on the bridge with a very bent and very nasty looking rail that has been shoved inside of the, uh, the, the, the door leading out from the main um, hallway into the bridge. And um, that's where we're going to pick up our story. So what would you like to do? Well, we're... You we're We've seen the lifeboats break off. Right. It's gotten quieter. The bang has stopped. Yep. Um, we should search the ship. Yeah. Yeah, make sure there aren't any of them still left mm -hmm. on the ship. Mm -hmm. All right, so you want to search the ship for anyone who may have stayed. Yeah, yeah. And do what if, they, if they're here? Well, we need to figure out uh, what they're purposes. Like, why, yeah, who else is on the ship and why they're still here now exactly. with the other guys? Are they staying to okay. throw us yeah. off so they can call? I mean, there'd be no way to call their friends back, but we didn't see the sh the boats leave, so they could just be right, you know, right behind us for all we know right now. So, um, what I would actually like to do is grab the captain's key and go into his room. Got it. And get a pistol he keeps in his lockbox. Okay, roll for that. Roll for okay. the Acquisition of said pistol and lockbox. Okay. One success and two ones. One. Two for me, one for you. It's too early for me to roll, so by all means take narrative result. Okay, so um, the captain was one of the last to go down. We had drug him back in with us onto the bridge. Okay. Um, so I will lean over and... Close his eyes. Okay, so he died. He so, died. Yes. Yeah. Was how did he die? Um, he was bashed in the head. Oh. By one of the uh, mutineers. Survivors. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So he was unfortunately, um, yes, he was he was killed in the mutiny. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, sorry, continue. You close his eyes. I'll lean over, close his eyes, and uh, grab his. Uh, the key to his, um, what are they called? What chambers? Are they called? Like a lockbox? Quarters. 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 Key to his Quarters. cabin. Quarters. cabin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, key to his quarters, yes. And uh, which also includes uh, a key to the lockbox where I know he kept his pistol. Okay. So you go and you get a very antique looking service revolver, like Colt 1911. Um, kind of attitude that's in there. It's very just old school, like issued in World War II mm -hmm. kind of revolver. And um, not even a revolver, it's like a slide pistol. Yeah. So, um, and you grab that and it has its clip and nothing else. I think it's a 10 shot. 10, 10, 10 or 12, 10, yeah. Yeah, so we'll call it 10. Okay. Of course you would call it 10. <laughs> Thank you. So you go and grab the service revolver. Service. Pistol. 
<laughs> uh, is there anything else <clears throat> in the captain's quarters we might be able to turn into a makeshift weapon? Like the bar that's holding the door shut and maybe keep yeah, that Yeah, like you can probably still out. grab that out. I mean, it's bent to hell, but you could definitely still have it. And after uh, after you've claimed this, you... Um, you see that the captain's course. I mean, you've been he's been on this thing three weeks. He's kept it tidy as as a captain to do. Mm-hmm. You know the the when you when you are part of the navy, you're you are literally meant to make everything immaculate all the time. So uh, he has a lot of his rituals and regularities that you see inside of it, but mostly maps, navigational charts, all which you have learned recently have become useless now that you have the sky is constantly being. Shrouded, and even when it is clear enough, nothing looks like what it should up in the sky. But we do have a way to navigate to these coordinates from the transmission, right? As best as you can, which has mostly just been by observing <coughs> the radio. Stren- yeah, you yeah know, the strength gotta, of the signal. Mm-hmm. Are there kind of are there any blueprints to the to the ship in the quarters? Yeah, let's see how they're looking. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> name of the game is I know. Want to do a thing? You roll some dice. All right. And it'll have some bad in the good. There you go. All right. There's one. Two at least. Two. But, uh, one for you. One for me. Great. Let me see if so I can take narrative control. <laughs> Shit. Wow. Uh, two sixes for me. Uh, ties go to the GM. You still succeed, mm-hmm. but uh, I gain narrative control mm-hmm. in the circumstances. So as you go into the captain's quarter, you can very much see that the um, the map of the recommissioned medical barge is available. It would actually, you'd probably have a model of the ship with its name on it and then probably a plaque mm-hmm. that would have some of its, its layout and interior inside of it. It's not too bad. You've been on this ship for a while. Mm-hmm. Like two weeks is not, a, is not a small amount of time to get used to you know, this kind of a barge. So most of the mid deck is laid out in like large, like trauma centers, mm-hmm. you know, they're like, um, I won't call them like cargo warehouses, but like basically above deck is meant to do crowd control. Mm-hmm. And then in the mid deck and the lower deck are all large areas where you can put beds. It's a mobile hospital is right. what it is. So there's right. lots of treatment rooms and there's lots of supply rooms, which are more, to the the fore part of the ship, and then the aft is mostly meant for like logistics, supplies, like supplies on a boat side, not supplies on a medical side. Mm-hmm. And um, you're you're definitely familiar. The difference is, is is that to your point of being able to have a map or not, you would absolutely be able to have a map of it. It's just laid out in the most technical okay. kind of jargon. I didn't know if there was something on the map that shows an area we maybe don't know about or recognize? Oh, I would definitely say that looking at it now, Mm -hmm. since the captain has kept this relatively to themselves, Mm -hmm. that you have noticed that there are a lot more supply depots, like little supply centers, than you originally were told or even privy to. Were privy to. And to be fair, that wasn't, um, that was something that was mostly dished out through the, uh, oh man, what are the, what do they call the logistics officers? I forgot. Not a quartermaster. A requisitions officer. Requisitions officer. Thank you. Yeah. So that's the that's the long short of it. Um. Well, I mean, one of us should stay here and make sure they don't retake the bridge if there are people here on the boat. Should just one of us stay here? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you've got your cat. So if, if, if you want to stay behind with the kitten in case... I feel like that's the safer bet. She decides to go into labor, that's probably... I mean, she's breathing pretty heavily, but I think it's just general nervousness. Okay. Um, but, I mean, I think if I have a physical barricade, I'll be safe, or we'll be safe from so we'll anybody else. So we'll leave behind them. But then the rest of y'all, uh, I mean, don't split up. I've, I've seen horror movies. That's always when something bad happens. Just stay... The rest of you just stay together. And at this point, the boat is doing, and this is pretty common nowadays, like you are not on a flat uh, sea by any chance. You are, you are constantly dealing with rolling bulges Yeah. Um, every time. And so you, you are in that position where you're constantly shifting your weight. Mm-hmm. And even moving from, you know, uh, deck to deck involves like a lot of 
grabbing a hold of the rails and trying to walk as stable as you can. Mm -hmm. So um, thankfully you've all gotten the sickness out of your system days ago, but even then it's still nauseating. So it's, it's scary like, too if you're not used to it. Yeah, it just is moving, and it's weird too. It's almost like um, everything feels like almost every every once in a while you feel like that point in which have you ever been in like turbulence in a plane when it just you just will kind of lose weight because it just drops mm -hmm. so suddenly. Yeah, like it seems like everything is so well light that sometimes when the bulges will lift you up, it's almost like you're up and then you'll just fall down and get this, this you know, controlled fall that mm. will just come out of nowhere, so. Mm. The ship makes a lot of noise, too. Yeah. Like, it's an older ship and it really, it creaks and there are lots of little ticks and, and little oh, yeah. sounds of metal oh. straining oh. periodically. Um, all right, so who's going where? Well... Um, I know the ship. You got the gun. You're calling the shots. And this is there no, some way for you to that. communicate, for us to communicate? Yeah, can we look for walkies? Are there any walkies? Short range walkie talkies or something like something they would use? At the bridge, there would be like um, an intercom system, so someone in the bridge could speak out. Okay. Well, we so there must be we'd have to reply on a wall. Oh, okay. Probably. Okay. And you'd, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So that's how we'll communicate. All right. Um, so I guess if you see anything, any ships come in or anything in the distance, yeah. let us know. And do I have any way that I can view anything that's going on on the ship? Are there any closed circuit cameras or, or anything no, like no that up cameras, in the bridge? No, no cameras, but you would, if you went out onto, like, the foredeck, you would be able to go and, you know, get a span of whatever the hell is you're in, in the middle of right now. Okay. Same. I mean, I have a set of binoculars. They just haven't been too useful. Right. Because it's, it's, there's a lot of time there's just nothing to see. There's nothing to see. That's yeah. the point. So in that way... This is this is interesting, but it's also eerily quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, what's our visibility on the water? Awful. Um, as far as like it just being dusty, and uh, you know, usually you if you're out this far in international waters, you would have pretty clear visibility for miles across. But between humidity, clouds, and dust, which is there, just seems to just be this weird ashen dust everywhere and it was kind of up at the top <clears throat> I've seen it's kind of rolled in after some time especially as you head farther farther south mm -hmm. and the only reason you were able to see the giant cloud to the north ooh, the northeast of you mm -hmm. up towards where the Americas are is because you saw a completely different color cloud kind of up in its giant mushroom like shape so, and, and now it's and just, it was like a weird color. It was like green or something. Or? Yeah, yellowish green. And it's yeah. like a it's a so in that way it's like you have a squall of ash coming from the south, and then you have this greenish orangish um, like cloud that will eventually turn into a squall once it starts hitting the waterline um, mm. that's to the northeast of you. And then of course monoliths piercing out. Right. So you'll right. have to keep an eye out for monoliths. To okay. make sure we don't hit them. Yeah. It's one of those things where they are far enough apart from each other that it's not like you're having to dart around them, obviously. Yeah. But, but if we're on that particular course. Now, are we, before you all leave, are we, have we plotted a general course towards where we think this signal is coming from? Yeah. You I, and I just metal had metal detector the tone until it hit. You've basically been hitting on a southeasterly direction. Okay. For um, so, southwestern, sorry, southwestern. I won't change our course unless unless we need to avoid something. Yeah. Um, so based on like seeing the her come out with the gun, uh, I'm gonna ask her if the captain had any other like wartime relics, like a bayonet or one of the swords they issue you. Like, is there was there anything else in there that might be used as a weapon? Do you want to roll for that? Yeah, probably. I'm looking for either. Um, like my grandfather's in the war. I, I have an idea. Bayonet from there. Yeah. You, you get what I'm after, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. A dress uniform sword on the yeah, wall or like something. something like that. You know? Yeah. Uh, two ones and, and one six. Okay. Well, let me see if I can gain some narrative control. There you go. Nope. nope. Why don't you tell me what you find? Um, sure. So uh, she brings me in to the captain's quarters, and uh, um, on the wall he does have, like, his like plaques and things, his stars, his, all the, the medals and things he's won, and uh, where the gun was kept is is also uh, like a vintage World War II bayonet, like the ones that you could not just the ones that go on the end of the 
the gun, but the ones that have the handle that you right. can actually just use it as a as a sword, as a knife. knife. Yeah. yeah, it's about a foot long blade. Got it. All right, yeah. so you find a long bayonet that has yeah. both a handle, but could also be fitted onto the end of a rifle if it wanted to. Yeah. So, um, and you grab that. The the gun itself is actually there, but it's so rusted and it's yeah, so even the bayonet's worn. not in the yeah. best of shape. It's right. seen combat, so it's yes. rusty and but it's but pointy. It's, it's pointy, yeah. That's basically <laughs> it's so, yeah. pointy. It's got a little bit of an edge on it. And I'm gonna take that plaque because one, it'd be nice to have a map to those rooms we haven't seen, and uh, two, I don't have a weapon, so yeah. I'm gonna hit someone if I have to hit someone. Yeah, that's fair. So um, you three are basically heading out to the midship if I'm hearing you correctly. Um, so you kind of go down into the patio, and the first thing you notice upon when opening the door out is just how thick the air is. It smells like... <sighs> it smells like right now with the wildfires, you know, or the brush fire. It just smells... It is, it's not so bad that you're coughing and choking from it, but it has that very distinct smell of burning. Yeah. That is that just hits you when you first come out into the air, and you also can see, and you really you hear it before you see it. But you kind of, as you're walking out to the midship, you hear as the as the ship is rolling and kind of tumbling, you kind of hear the of like weight being shifted mm -hmm. to and from, mm -hmm. and you look out and you see the lolling bodies of people out on the deck who seem to just be rolling and thudding against the rails from the left to the right as the ship is kind of tilting and making its its um, erratic uh, move across the water. We have to check the bodies. Right. For any survivors. What are you checking the bodies for? To see if anybody's alive, alive or pretending to be. That's fair. Okay. I will. Wait, there's two ones. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm stubborn. Stubborn. Um, and I'm going to re-roll those two So babies. how are you applying stubborn in this situation? Well, um, you know, let's say the, the guys don't think it's a problem, but I, I know people. I've seen the worst of people. And you can, you can, you wouldn't be surprised if some people play dead. Yeah. And you want to make sure that's not the case before you just start knocking bodies over. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'm built to save people. So if there's a chance, I have to take it. Hey oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One six. Let's see if I can wrest narrative control from you. I have one six. Ty goes to the dealer. At least he didn't get two more. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't get two more. <laughs> <coughs> there you go. There are several people who are not dead, but are mortally injured, whether they have been, um, no one's been shot. You, for whatever luck you want to give yourself, you had the only gun on the ship, but there is lots of deep lacerations um, bleeding out. Some people are absolutely unconscious. Um, and there's a few people who you recognize from the cruise ship who are just, as soon as they hear the Tang, 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 and as soon as they, they even, they flutter their eyes open and kind of look at you, uh, they just, they just lose it. They just start breaking down, like just, just moaning and upset and crying, um, just not even sure if they should even ask for help. And one person um, asks, just asks, you says, just says, don't, don't, no, I'm done. Just toss me overboard with the rest. So one is not interested in staying around. I would say there are at least five mortally injured people on the deck. What do you want to do? Look, you're the surgeon here. How bad are these people? Yeah, what do we need to do? What, how, can, are, they, are, they, are they done? At first glance, I mean, this is uh, 
and not exactly a surgical setting at first glance, things are not looking good, but we need to get them into the medical bay so that I can look them over. What about our friend who doesn't want to go on? He's the one who's also, I should probably be more specific, he's the one who, after closer observation, hasn't lied on it, but he's basically pulled his body up, and you can see he's bleeding from his legs, but he's kind of lifted himself up to the rail, and he's kind of pushing himself up to the midline rail, and as you start walking towards him, he kind of looks at you and goes, nope, no, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And once one of the bulging of the items start coming down, he kind of tumbles us and he tumbles backwards as he hits his head on the back and just kind of falls. You hear a sploosh as he takes himself into the water with him. So, uh, okay. yes. Well, that solves that problem. So three of you, five bodies. Uh, you'd probably have to make two trips, okay. if not several. Um, I'll go. Should we grab Carter if we're moving to the med bay, or at least tell him where we're headed? We should find a comm system and tell him what's happening. Well, before we sweep the boat, though, should we alert everyone that might still be on board to the location we're about to be in? No. Uh, we're not too far away. I, I can... Okay. Jog you just go back up the rails and let them know where we're headed and what's, what the plan is. Okay, so we're how are we going to steer the ship from from down there? Well, I'm I'm just letting you know where we are. We don't want to announce our location yet. Oh, gotcha. So if something does happen, you know, on the map, here's where we are. Okay. Here's where we will be. Okay. So you run back down through the through the main line at this point. Kirk's already kind of just trying to get one person in a position where you can carry them, every little adjustment you make is just a scream in the top of their lungs, and you can kind of see that this person you're holding on to has one arm across their waist as they're trying to hold on to your other arm, and you can tell that if they didn't have their arm up where they are right now, they would just be losing their intestines all over the floor. Okay, stop, 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 stop. I will go get some supplies and bring them up here. Okay. Look for, uh, um, you know, like lifeguards have the boards that they'll they'll carry people from the crest of the beach Gritty. to the ambulance, something like that, like the manual ones. Look, I'm I'm not the doctor here, but maybe we should just be grabbing some morphine. Hmm. I will grab everything that we need. In any case, I'll put a little kit together. I'll be right back. So you are going to run down to where one of the trauma stations are and just start grabbing an, a gear that you can bring up to top side. Yes, but I will be taking my, not my time, but I will be carefully going around corners and looking around seeking. to make sure things are there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, by all means, let's see how it goes. I'm rolling again. <laughs> yeah, this is a conflict. Ew. All right. One for me, one for you. All yours. Ah. <laughs> okay. Um, it's clear. Nobody's in here. Um, I have to do it one-handed because I'm not going to let go of the gun Got uh, to be taken off, uh, off guard. Start things inside of bags as much right. as you can. Any, anything to stop any bleeding that I can stop. Right. And, yes, also morphine if I need to. So you can tell that supplies have definitely been raided. Mm -hmm. Like, there is just stuff, and, you know, packages are tumbling across the ship just as the bodies were on the upper deck. But no matter what, like, this is a ship meant to service thousands of soldiers, injured soldiers. Like, they just could not take enough to run you dry at this point. So you put together a kit, you mm -hmm. shove it all in, and you run back up. I mean, maybe you can even just bang a gurney along the way, just dragging it. Just in case. With your satchel. Um, and you head it back up to to the screaming and wailing injured on the main deck. Okay, yeah. I will go to the most uh, vocal first. All right, well, and that would definitely be the that man. That would be who I'm holding. Yeah, the who you've laid down at this point. He kind of is grasping onto your shoulder. You can feel his nails are digging. He goes, oh, God, it hurts. Just 
God, just anything do you just God, they just were awful. We told them we told them they told them that they can go just don't do anything and they I tried to get on the ship. I, you know, the lifeboats, they were all full. Some people literally tried to jump off the ship onto the boat. And when one of them knocked the boat over because they landed onto it, they just started stabbing anyone who got too close. God, how could you fucking leave us up there, man? I'm sorry. Look, we'll just hold on. Squeeze me as hard as you need to squeeze me. Do not close your eyes. Like, looks down at it and like, oh god, I can feel it. It's fucking coming out of my goddamn guts, man. What's oh. coming, uh, Ella? I, while they're having this conversation, I'll be checking the situation out, and they are, as you said, all mortally wounded. Career. They, they are um, all mortally wounded. Would be very tough to tell on here. They all have major injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you have a treatment center. You could all technically do what you can needed to do to treat them, but at this point, it's man hours and lives saved at this point. No one's walking off of the ship for weeks. Right. Is this something I can do on my own with no other real medical assistance? to save him. So with, I'm gonna probably get reality checked here, but with a gut injury like this, it's if, if his insides weren't cut and he's currently um, uh, septic or anything like that, you'd have to sew him up, you'd have to dose him up on morphine the entire time, You'd have to recover. You'd have to clean it real good to make sure there's no infections there because he's been sliding across the deck right. for minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he is months away from any recovery, even in a hospital. Okay. Then um, I will lean over. Mm-hmm. And I'll... What's your name? <sighs> James. James. You got it. James. <clears throat> James. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There's nothing I can do for you right now. What? You're you're a fucking surgeon. What do you mean there's nothing you can do? All of your friends took a lot of the stuff that I needed. <sighs> but what I can do is I can put you to sleep. Is there anything that you want to say? He kind of uh, he doesn't can't make eye contact with you, um, and he's processing this image while his pain is still subsiding. You can start to hear that now that voices are coming up in here. That other people are starting to stir and wake a little bit, but he lifts his head up finally and doesn't look at you, but instead just kind of looks up in the sky and just goes. just was really hoping that <sighs> you know when you you, know, you run a marathon and you you run really really hard and it hurts the entire time and you just keep going because at some point you know there's going to be a Gatorade stand right there and you get to drink it and you put a little water on yourself and you can keep on running and at some point the marathon ends it sucks but at some point, it just ends. It just, just was hoping it would be around the next bend, you know? It just wanted it to, to be done. It just, how long can it go on? How long can the pain and the suffering go on? Yeah, James, you ran a hell of a race, buddy. And we've got a little Gatorade for you here now. It's okay to rest. <gasps> It's okay to take a break. He kind of leans himself back at this point, kind of just like sidles up, and he just, he, he 
doesn't say anything. He just kind of looks at you and just gives the shrillest of nods and just kind of leans back and just... Kirk, hold his arm. I'm going to have him... I'm going to tell him, hey, James, look at me, bud. We're going to do something right now, okay? Take your mind off this. We're going to make a character for a game that I play, okay? <laughs> Fuck you, man. Come on, listen to me, listen to me. Focus on me, okay? Do you want to be a human or an elf? Huh? Human or an elf? Elf. You want to be an elf, okay? Great. I don't want my last moments on this <laughs> earth to be making a fucking game. Just let me just let me look at the sky or something, okay? Or just... Just let me do this on my own. I don't need this, okay? Just All right, James. All right. And I will give him a lethal dose okay. of morphine. Yeah. As he kind of like slowly starts to fade into consciousness, he puts his arms up and as his eyes begin to kind of flitter and doses his head back as he's going to go into unconsciousness, he kind of like has his moment he's looking at you and goes, an elf would have been fine. And then he drifts off into nothingness and never wakes up. I write it in my uh, game book. Great. James the Elf. James the Elf. And um, at this point, you continue to go look at some of the other people who are on the midship. I mean, they're not nearly as bad as he was with it laid out. And mm -hmm. many of them, I'd say three of the four left, are still definitely unconscious. Um, but the other, uh, well, I guess the question is, is do you want to give the same treatment to the other four? You know, there are three who could not give you consent right now, even if you wanted to wake them up. Mm -hmm. And one more that you could potentially have that discussion with. Is anyone, are any of these people in good enough shape to maybe make them comfortable, put them in a... I don't know, medically induced coma, for lack of a better word, until we can get to the sanctuary. Maybe there are better equipment there. Anything we could just stabilize some people in the med bay and then just keep them comfortable until maybe more help arrives or we can get to some help. The problem there is the supply. We currently, just at a first glance, don't have a whole heck of a lot left for those who are left and who didn't try to kill other people. I mean, I have seen the worst of what humankind does to each other. And uh, obviously, this being the end of the world uh, steps it up a notch. Even after trying to attack us and kill us, that guy had the nerve to blame him and to blame us and to give us shit for it. Like. I mean, I thought you were a doctor, right? Like, I am a doctor and I save. And I save those who can be saved as much as I can. But I also have to make the difficult decisions when they can't be. I also have to make the decisions whether or not we can afford to do it. So it's decision-making time then. Are you in a position where you want to hold people up inside of the bay and lay them up because that will take gurning them all down or are you going to make the decision now? All I'm saying is you don't have to make the decision. If you don't have to make the decision right now, all any of us have at this point is the opportunity for a little more time. If you want to give them a little more time, let's give them a little more time. If you want to end it now, we will help you end it now. I will help you end it now. But if you want to give them more time, we have the means to give them a little more time. Do any of them have a shot at all? I mean, can any of them... <laughs> I mean, do any of them have a shot? In a normal world, sure. In normal circumstances, yeah. In this one... Yeah, but normal might be at the end of that radio signal that some semblance of normalcy might be there. Do you, I mean, we don't know yeah, how Yeah, but far we got to make it is. to normal first. I know. So, Carter, at this point, you're up with 
Lola uh-huh. with the cat at this point, and you are definitely seeing that the area in front of you, like as you're driving the ship forward, and you're dealing with the lists. I mean, I'm honestly not paying that much attention to that. No, it's. it's, <laughs> it's a, I am not doing a very good job with the, with the, <laughs> the job that you, you gave Carter. Right, you're mostly just petting the cat. I have her makeshift carrier open on the right. captain's bed. Yeah. And I'm singing to her. I'm trying to make up songs, but I don't know any songs about Lola. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm just Fair. mixing a bunch of other songs together and just singing to her. And I've got the, the carrier kind of open, and I'm telling her, like, this is the captain's bed. You can have this whole bed for yourself. Like, this is right. all yours, Lola. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to cheer her up, you know. And at this but, point, you do feel, um, and you'll feel it too as well, too, since it's all on the same ship, but you'll feel the four of the ship rise very suddenly. Yeah. As if it just like just hit a, a really large swell and then you'll kind of feel that again, that thing I described earlier where you're all weightless for a moment because it just yeah. like back down and you'll all kind of have a moment where you're on the Tower of Terror where you mm. just whoa, Yeah, that lurch. Lurch as it just hits it just hits the bottom of a cascading wave. And does it seem like it's it's this is it's been like this for a Oh, wow, yeah, right. It's that one was a particularly huge one, though. Okay, I've got my hand on Lola so she doesn't go airborne. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's to the point of where you do all lift out of your seat for just a second enough to where you, yeah. you, know, you feel the impact as your body hits rigid against the bottom of it. And everything, at least in the cabin's court, is bolted down. If anything yeah. that isn't bolted down basically scatters and kind of just falls. So we yeah. did we go up and then down a little? Yeah. And I assume the bodies in the ground also just did that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is, has the... Has, Has that the landscape affected? changed? Has have we lost anyone that was near we'll, the edge? We'll get to that in yeah. a second because okay. I want to see. I want to see if Carter's interested yeah. in seeing what the landscape of the, yeah. I'll the water um, looks I'll, like. I'll I'll gently pull the the sort of crocheted uh, shawl that I've had Lola wrapped up in. I'll right. put her back in the in the cooler and close up one end of it, and then I'm going to sort of use like a, a sort of thing to to strap it. So that it's it's not going to shift around, right? And so she should be relatively okay. Nothing yeah. will bump into her or any other kind of stuff. And so I'm like, shh, shh, shh. and I kind of try to calm her down. And then I'm going to go into the out of the captain's quarters into the main bridge with a right. big opening, and look at this ro- roiling, roiling water. Yeah. W- so water. What, you, what you notice at some point is the one that you hit to you hit right against the ship. So the the bulge, like you, the ship was pointed into the bulge, so it kind of okay. went up and down. So in that way, you like you rolled the wave up before it fell back down again. Yeah, and you can see there's another one coming up. But what's more important is you can see a wave or a a bulge. Yeah, a that, swell. A swell that is to the left of the ship, and it seems to be just twice as high as the normal swells that you've been seeing. Okay. So. Oh, I don't know. I don't know a ton about boats, but I mean, I feel like anything that big could capsize us. I don't know if that's the word for it, but all right. I'm going to get on the, the intercom. Right. And I start letting people know. I'm like, uh, uh, okay, you know that, that last one uh, wave? Uh, that was pretty big, but there's a much bigger one coming. I don't know. Is there anything I can do to keep us from sinking. <clears throat> I, I'd feel a lot better if one of you who knows about boats and stuff were up here and not me. Can we see it from the deck? Yeah, so soon you're on the, the mid part of the deck, you can actually see as as um, as you look, and it was behind you, since you're all kind of facing as you look behind, you can see, because it's dark, you can just see the dark kind of growing, growing mm-hmm. onto the side of you, and this is definitely like, it's not clipping into a wave, Mm. This stage yet, but it is huge. It is going to ride you. It's like a crater-sized wave. That's just directly to your. It's like hundreds of feet, basically, yeah, right? It's mm-hmm. huge. It's huge. Yeah. And if you do not go directly into it, it is most likely going to take you down. Um, okay, I'm gonna run over to the calm. Right. And and. Tell him to aim straight for it, and I'm going to tell these guys, "Run, run, run! We you need to get to steer inside." Into it, like, like yes. perpendicular. Okay, okay. Uh, that's this one, right? Uh. <laughs> yep. And you just start turning the helm. 
<laughs> right into it to dive Ew. directly into <laughs> it. <laughs> one for me. Oh, one for you. And one for you. And a six for us. <laughs> so I pretty much saved everybody now. So. No. Oh, <laughs> two sixes for me, though. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, More well today. More well today. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay, so uh, Carter, in some kind of like talking you through, or maybe just pure dumb luck as you start moving this thing forward to go perpendicular you can kind of feel as the mm -hmm. boat just kind of shifts and meets head on with this just monumental swell yeah. and you see that it's also just like clearing some of the ash out as you're kind of into it just because there's so much humidity in the air as it just flishes forward that you manage to get into it and you all feel the beginning <laughs> of the roller coaster as it clicks you mm. up, and you yeah. just are looking up into a huge rolling tide of water, and you're just praying, praying that you don't see that little bit of white mm -hmm. that comes with uh, just rolling in on the top break. of each other, right, mm -hmm. where yeah. it breaks, and, but you're just riding this huge swell, and you're feeling it as it rides up, and all of the bodies, everyone that you were working on, and yourselves too, you basically have to just go on all fours to hold on to whatever you can. And everybody that was on the main deck just kung, 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 and all a Titanic before it starts diving down deep. Mm -hmm. You just watch as they just fling off of the back because you're now taking a, a 90 degree, if not greater, um, angle straight up. We're being, we're being pulled up the wave. We're being pulled up the okay. wave right now. Yeesh. And you yeah. get onto that top, and at that point, uh, you reach to the top of the swell, and at that point, it actually clears out for just a moment. You can kind of see through the ash and fog, and you see a sea, literally, but also a sea of monoliths that have all pressed up. And in the horizon, you can see the red moon just kind of pursing through, and it is it is blood red at this stage, and it is filling the entire skyline. You can actually see a lot of the major landmarks of the moon, like some of the mar major craters, mm -hmm. and they are as big as dinner plates, where you could hold your whole hand up and that it's an entire crater of one of them of one of the things you see on the moon, and you can just see it. But you also see from the bright blood red light that is basking across the sea right now, you can see shapes are just moving through the water, almost like it's just a sea of, of giant tuna, you know, or tuna-sized creatures that are just flitting in the it's water. Never, it's never just tuna. <laughs> and they are... Uh, this is Ivan Van Norman. This is never just tuna. Just tuna. But they all seem to be going in one direction. You know, almost like they're riding the the swell with you. Is it the direction we're going in? It, well, right now, which is the way you're pointed as you're going. Oh, right, because we went off. Of you told our me to do that, though. Course. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> just that, Ella, I'm just doing right. what you told me. But at that moment, where you feel like you know when you're on a swing set and you go as high as you can. Mm -hmm. And you're as most vertical as you are, and you just know that if you went any farther, you would just fall backwards, mm -hmm. straight onto it. Mm -hmm. That's where you feel like you are before you finally crest over the swell, and you just all boom, just fall forward as the the four of the ship just points directly down, and you are now on the bottom part of this roller coaster, tumbling down into the water. So, yeah, yeah. Or at least you navigated it, so you got through it. Yeah, I'm gonna go check on Lola, make sure she's not too. <laughs> <laughs> good girl, it's good girl. Of, it literally, it just did nothing. Like it just yeah. kind of bop. It went to one side of the bed, and then went yeah. to the other side of the bed. <laughs> I mean, she's doing this this general sort of panting thing yeah. that. that Cats like just do when they're nervous. A or well, no, just when they're kind of nervous. Yeah. Like they'll kind of drool sometimes or they'll they'll just right. like huff, huff. instead of chuff. So I'm just making sure that it's just normal and that it's not like she's in labor. Lola's right. learned a long time ago that leaving this thing is not something that is in her plan ever. And she likes her house. Until she, she, like she until house. she delivers these kittens, she has zero interest in going anywhere. Yeah. So. I'm a little worried that she's getting hungry though. It's it's been it's been six or seven hours, I think, since it's, I last fed or something. It's been a while. Yeah. So uh, I'm so sorry. Well, we've we've rided this wave out. Unfortunately, the issue that you did have 
about the body seems to have resolved itself at this stage. So um, at least as much as you can tell, unless, unless there is an opportunity for you to try to save someone as they were cascading down into the cold water. I, I believe that that wave was probably too big for any of us to be able to react properly before getting our own bearings. Kirk, Howie, do you feel the same way? Um, yeah, I mean, we knew it was coming, so I don't know what we would have had a chance to grab, but I feel like if, if there was something to grab, we could have, but I mean, what's your upper body strength if you're at a vertical base? Like, what do you, like, how are you, can you hold, and then when it crashes back down, where do you go? Right. You know? Like, short of, like, finding something to, like, pilot seat against and, like, brace that way, that's I don't, a, that's I don't a, think. That's a really good point. Why don't you hold on <laughs> as much as you possibly can? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no one's either. Okay. So if you fall out of the boat, you might find a floating door that's only big enough for you. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not. It was not, not just love big enough. enough for, it was big enough for both of them. Clearly. <laughs> All right. Nine candles. We are back to nine dice. Uh, we have some truths of which to speak. The This cresting wave, and it sounds like Howie did not have enough upper arm strength in order to hold on to it in this vertical position. Mm -hmm. But you do have the benefits of having the first truth. Um, first truth, uh, when I lost uh, control and lost my grip, I slammed against uh, a wall of something, like another cabin or something, mm -hmm. and, and cracked a rib. Okay, so you impacted after you slid all the way down yeah. into the mid. Yeah, like, you know, the corner of a wall? Yeah. It hit me right here. It cracked, cracked a couple ribs right there. Mm. All right, so we're going... A little harder twice. to breathe now and a lot of pain. So, um... Uh... This is the smaller of the upcoming swells. This is the smallest of the upcoming swells. That wasn't the only gun on the ship, but it was the only loaded gun on the ship. There's another gun on the ship? Mm-hmm, but okay. it, no ammo for it. Got it. I do know about those extra storerooms. Mm. I was the lead medical uh, on the ship. Okay. And I have the keys. So you have the keys to the extra supplies. Uh, now that we've crested over this, the smaller swell, uh, I only catch a glimpse of it, um, bet between that and I, what, I can see the beginning of the next swell. You can see the beginning of the next one. I can see the beginning of the next swell, but there, the monoliths, like, I, I see what seems like a bit of a pattern, like, mm -hmm. in the direction where we want to be going towards that, uh, towards that transmission, where the transmission said to go, it feels like there are less monoliths. So there's like I, the the monoliths have some sort of change in in density and proximity to each other, and we're being carried towards that by these swells. Okay, it, so you are there are less monoliths where you are going. We're trying to get to less monoliths, but the swell is the swells are leading us leading. into a more dense kind of forest on the water. As you move forward, you're going into an area, but behind you is more. Mm, Great. Yeah. So that's uh, one, two, three. Well, one, two, three, four, five, so you're six. Mm -hmm. uh, when I impacted against the wall, uh, I did so on my back. And when I looked up uh, on the wall there, I was hanging one of those uh, lifesavers uh, yeah. with enough rope to throw it overboard to pull someone in. So I don't know, a couple hundred feet, however much rope okay, there yeah. would be. Okay. That's, that now exists. Okay, great. Um, I you were able to toss the life ring over the side and you heard the satisfying twang of someone grabbing a hold of it and managing to at least 
at the point of impact uh, make it taut. Sir? You're eight. Someone or something is causing problems with the engine. And nine. One of those things jumped out of the water like a dolphin and I saw it awesome so it jumped you watched it go kind of lift up and went down again mm -hmm. great uh, I would also go so far as to say that in this hitting like coming off of the water you probably all got a big wash like onto the main ship in fact even it jumping out of the water I think you probably saw it flop on the deck for a moment before it managed to roll back into the water. Mm -hmm. And it definitely is, uh, you saw, it's a long, almost eagle-like creature, but it's huge. I mean, it was almost as long as the deck was. It kind of came in and, and kind of went in there and you heard it shriek for a second <laughs> before it like managed to roll back into the water as it just kind of came in. But it was like seeing a, uh, like seeing a 10 foot long, 15 foot long moray eel just flop onto your deck before it rolled back into into the water. So, um, so it sounds like we'll pick up our story immediately from when you impacted into the, the plunge water and you felt all of the water cascade onto you and then you managed to stabilize. Not sure if what you saw was real or not, this thing kind of come onto deck and then flop back into the ocean. What do you want to do? Well, kind of building on what you'd said where I threw the life thing over. Yeah. Uh, can we say that when I hit the coil of rope was there and I actually got, I'm I'm the thing counterweighting. Yes. The person I did. It's tied up in me. Yes. And I kind of in that moment recognized it and just went, and went, I'll deal with the, the circumstances of this later. Great. Okay. So you yeah. grab the hold of it and you can feel the rope pressing on you. Yeah. Just, and, I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, it's it's in me, but I'm using its tangled web to yeah. just hold hold, hold myself good. basically to like be the rock right. that's going to keep it there. And it is, it is not going anywhere. No. So. It's not comfortable. No. You know, it's probably, if I have exposed arms and things, probably grating a bit and yes. causing some irritation. Yeah. And salt water. Yeah. Mm. Fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. Salt so you have it for sure. That That is a truth that we will lay out as part of, of your truths but um yeah more importantly what do you want to do uh i would just start screaming guys help 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 yeah i'm gonna run over and check on howie yeah all right yeah i'm on the tell. intercom and i'm saying to people like uh okay there's uh, there's another big one of those coming i i really think if you're all okay please please come back let's um let's at least get everybody under deck Great. Uh, but yeah. we're not we're not going the way we we want to the the sea isn't letting us we're we're there's another big wave coming, and I, it's taking us. There, there's so many, so many, so many of those those big monoliths. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll tell him. There's someone on the other end of the rope. Help me pull up the rope. So uh, Carter and Ella, you run over to where Howie is, and you um, grab a hold of this rope, and you take the tension off of him as you pull up as much with your power as you possibly can to try to get this whatever's at the end of it. Ha! Huh. Well, that's interesting. But one, one, one. one. I'm, I'm gonna take. I'm okay. Gonna take a shot. I'm very insistent. Insistent. <laughs> All damn right. it! I'm gonna pull whatever the hell this is. Uh, okay. Over. Whatever it takes, I'm gonna get this thing. Yeah, get it over. The... Let's see how it well, is. Well, it was worth a shot. <laughs> oh, that was the. That was. I mean, we've had some quick scenes. This has never happened. Quickest yeah. scene I think we've ever had. Holy yeah. Shit. 
Um, <laughs> what happens when you help other people? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. <laughs> Important life lesson here, kids. Don't um, help people. So just let them go overboard. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, that's fine. EO. Eight dice. Eight, eight truths. Uh, Kirk, you'd start with the first truth, man. And it was a failure. And, and no, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I know. I have. I I hate to to go on this, but I do have a suggestion. <laughs> uh huh. But I I I. It is yours, which you wish to take. Well, I'm curious what your suggestion is. How about this? I write it down for you, <laughs> and then you can make that decision or not of whether you'd like to use my suggestion or if you'd like to do your suggestion. Uh huh. Pretty good deal. And the last game was an hour and thirty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the world is very dark right now. <laughs> yeah. The world very, is dark. Very, very dark. The world is dark. So. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking. That's what you were thinking, too? Yeah. High five. All right. It's All right. it's one of them on the other end. That's what I had in mind, too. Me, too. All Yay. Right. We'll pick something else. <laughs> Great. Great. All right. Awesome. Uh, Ella. Um, as he is pulling it up, I see it and shoot it. You see it and shoot it. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. Uh, go ahead, Carter. Um, there, there, the glass on the bridge is starting to crack. Okay. And I just absolutely know that when we hit our next... Swell, it's gonna come right through. It's gonna come in, so this is not a safe place. So when that swing, actually, when you impacted into it, you actually f heard rocks like just yeah impact to it, and just the the impact from place it just, where I am is not gonna yeah it's be safe. It's spider webbed a little bit. Yeah. All right. So that's your four. Um. It's gonna be. Uh, let's say fifteen minutes until the next wave. Okay. Man, you're all so awful to each other. It's like one of those random I games. Thought be, I thought it was going to be like 30 seconds. I'm, I'm very happy with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you see land ahead. Oh. To you, Kurt. Um, we can see a shape on the land that looks like a lighthouse. Hmm. And suddenly a light comes on. There's a light on the land. Seven. Ella. Did I, did I resolve that whole shooting and thing? I meant I shot and killed it. Did I? Did we? Are we good? No, there? your new truth is you kill it. I killed it. Okay, great. <laughs> and that would leave you with the last one, Carter. Eight. Okay, another truth. Um, there's another voice that's gone on to the comm system. There's oh, to the comm system. Okay, did it say anything or just another voice? Said. On the radio or the ship's comms? The ship's, the ship's comms. Oh, are all, shit. There's, there's another person on the ship. Mm -hmm. They got on the, the PA, and, the, and they say, the only safe place is in the bilge. In the bilge? Yeah. All right. Great. Eight candles. Eight truths. Um, Ella, as you watch as Kirk is pulling this thing up, you see as a lamprey-like mouth just lifts its Ugh. head up with teeth just laid out everywhere. <laughs> it kind of looks at you and lifts up one of its tentacles to try to like just grab it, Kirk, with one of its, uh, with one of its appendages, and that's when you just cow, 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 cow. You just shoot it, and you watch as it just jerks as you watch each bullet kind of just enter and then exit as you watch its exit wound and splatter just kind of come across each side of its body as it just <laughs> and it kind of hangs dead as Kirk you drop the damn thing and, and actually unwinding Howie I would assume mm. at this point as you're helping Howie unwind you just kind of watch this thing just just like slop down dead on the main deck and it's a part of its um, body is just kind of hanging off the edge of the ship, and you can see it's at some point the weight's going to counter enough where it's going to slide into the ocean. So, mm -hmm. and then Carter, as you through the spider webbed glass, yeah. you kind of see the swell coming up. But even before the swell, 
which you can notice is is coming in a very similar direction to where the first one was. Yeah. But to your right, which is I'm I'm, see, I'm, ter I'm terrible with with nautical left and rights. So I'm trying not to get it wrong. Porter's Darboard. You know how to hear. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but we I were believe going, we were going southeast. You were going before? southeast, which means it so would we be turn left. So if you were going we southeast, it would be to your you're going south. Southwest is where you're going. I mentioned you're going down. Oh, so and then means, which way did we have to turn into the to you south? To south in order to okay. go into it. So this would mean it would be to, right. it would be to your east, was where you see land. Okay. Yes. Um, and is that the general direction of where our radio signal was from too? Yes. Okay. So I want to try to. I'm gonna. Tr basically turn the, the ship to be on that heading. Mm -hmm. And the controls lock in that position, right? Right. Okay, so I'm gonna leave them locked. I'm gonna turn the heading so they would face us Yeah, but you will way. not be facing directly into where the, the swell is coming now. So just to, But that's just what we did clear. last time too, right? That's how we survived the last one? You survived the last one by having- By going head on. By going it. head on into the swell. Yeah. By going directly to the land, you will now have it kind of behind you and slightly to the left. Do we have any type of Back uh, idea of how far out that is? That is an excellent question, here's, which will involve someone thing, who is better. I know so little about ships and stuff, and in the moment, I think I would have just set the course for the land and turned yeah. it, not knowing that that oh, yeah. would potentially be bad for oh, yeah, all no, of us. I, 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 would, I would not know yeah, that. Yeah, I think Carter you would have yeah, done know it that. for yeah. the yeah. land. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah, so I turn it and I lock that up, and yeah. then I'm going to go grab Lola's container. Right. And I'm going to try to head below decks. Okay. Um, but be before I head below decks, that's the last thing I want to say on the comms is, I'm heading, I'm heading below decks. I don't think the bridge is going to be safe up here. I, I set the controls for, for heading towards the land and signal. I saw land. So who knows? We could be good very and soon. <laughs> as soon as you hear that click off, you kind of see Carter with his igloo just <laughs> come down the steps <laughs> as you're still unwinding Howie from this. Yeah. And that's at some point, shortly after, while you're coming down, you hear the comms come on and, and you hear a, a gruff, almost like um, just really low-pitched voice say at the same time goes... If the bridge isn't safe, then the bilge will be. If we're going to I'm so it. glad it was not a pirate voice. I thought yeah. I was going to be like, arr, arr. <laughs> Old, no. Do Stinky Joe. I recognize arr. this voice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's over the comms. Um, that is an excellent question. Do you recognize the voice? Yes, you do recognize the voice. It is. It's it's one of the one of the officers that was serving on the ship who has been missing for weeks now. And initially you thought that he went overboard as part of the the whole you know, getting through the squalls kind of a situation. Um, but he's been yeah, this is the first time you've heard his voice. You thought he went overboard. So I recognize that voice. D who, the guy that just came on the, the intercom? Yeah, he's an officer we thought went overboard. Is he, he's been is he missing. trustworthy? Would he lie to us? Is anybody no. anymore? No, I, I don't think he would lie to us, but he's been missing. We thought he was dead. Should we go to the bilge like he says? What the hell's the bilge? Uh, I don't know what a bilge is. Yeah, I don't know either, I but know I assume it's down, is. right? The bilge is, is the area on the boat that's below the water line, and it's usually in the area where you kind of, it's... it's. Do I still have the plaque? Yes. <laughs> oh, let me look at this plaque. It's the area below the water line. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Good thing you grabbed that. Yeah. My character wouldn't know this, but <laughs> if anybody knows anything about ships, it's an area where they can change the, the height of the, the boat in the water sometimes. Mm. Uh by pumping water into or out of right. this chamber. The more water you put into it, the more stable it is mm. on the yeah. seas, but then the faster it is if you put it higher above the water line. So, yeah. right. am I so right there? Or yeah, there? pretty much. I mean, it, it basically, it's a, it, if that person is in the bilge, hopefully it's not full, and it's at the bottom of the boat, it should be relatively safe. So. Uh, yeah, I'll coil up the remaining rope. Okay. And coil take that up. with us. You're gonna take the whole donut with you too? 
Um, no, nah, I'll cut the donut off. Okay, cut the donut off. And as you're kind of doing these last little bits, you kind of watch as finally the, the rough and tumble seas. You kind of watch as the creature just slops into the water and you hear it unceremoniously like bang against the side of the boat a few times before it just hits the water and you kind of watch as the splash kind of just splinters off into the middle of the dark sea. So Yeah. Also, I'm in a pretty good amount of pain. I'm you'll you see me breathing a little more shallow and I'm grabbing my side like <sighs> once we get to the bilge I'll I'll yeah. ch- check your situation. Smaller problem for a different time. Time out. Are we going to the bilge? Where those th- like that's closer to where those things are. With no, I mean they, the ship I know separating that separating us. Like mm. but further away from where that is, and I point to the giant wave coming. It's all about time, man. <laughs> and uh, I mean, if, if the ship flips over, uh, I feel like that's gonna be where the most of the air is trapped anyway. I don't know. I don't know ship stuff. Let's, I hate guessing. Let's oh. just head there first. Um, oh, <laughs> he is a knowledgeable. Yeah, it it's doesn't sound like this is a this is sailor. a very exciting uh, prospect for you. What's going on in your mind right now? I mean, no, it does. I t- I just came face to face with that thing. Right. In my head, even though there is steel between us, I'm closer to whatever the hell that is. Right. And In the water. That. Uh, prospect does not thrill me. Got it. Um, but I don't have a better idea. Right. Um, so and how fast know. can this thing go? So it's sorry. Yeah. I don't know. For a for probably a recommissioned a medical freighter, I'd say it probably tops out at. God, I'm gonna get so many nautical nerds are just gonna <laughs> slap me in the face. Probably. <laughs> no matter what you say, you know it's wrong. Pause probably for Googling. Going to say 12 knots. Great. Eight to 12 knots is so probably if we've max. Been, like 12 knots, like full. Can we ask an electronic full speed to convert that. If so we've been, uh, <laughs> if we've been playing it safe to conserve fuel, we see the land, we see the target, we should gun it. Like if especially, it's not already there. Yes, especially. To I already do the, I already gunned it as much as I could. Okay, gun so it's it already. Okay, we're hopefully, full steam ahead right now. Yeah. Do the three of us have we seen the land? I think. Or I, just him. I, I'm I mean, the only one who saw it. Right. Between. And at this point, it would, he would have he would have pointed you towards it. Right. So unless you would have like looked out, you know, off the side of the uh-huh. ship, um, you probably would you'd have to literally go back to the bridge or go to the fore deck and look out in front in order to probably see it. At okay. this and ain't nobody got time for that. Well, wait. If you're down here, who's steering the ship? Where are we going? I, I pointed it towards the towards the land. It it the controls just lock. How's Lola? Oh, she's she's great actually. Thank thanks for asking. Good. Good. Okay, let's get going then. See, Lola? How he likes you. Make it easy. <laughs> okay, it's so okay. A locked ship into the bilge. Uh, you, it doesn't take long. It's not a big ship. Um, just a few minutes, really, to go through the whole process. So. I assume there's some degree of, uh, right, like outsides of ships need maintenance and things. I assume there's some degree of oxygen tanks about in the boat. I'd like to see if Looks any like of the scuba stuff? yeah, like any of the rooms we pass along the way would contain such things. <laughs> and, for and, and because the story we're telling, uh, I'm gonna say if I do succeed here, we mm-hmm. find one. We'll have to share it if it comes to us. Great. No, we're giving it. To there the we cat. go. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's, no, no one. No oh, one. Wow. Yeah, excellent. Well, so nice. take the top, and since since you already declared the the. Um, the outcome. The outcome. Yeah. yeah, you find one maintenance uh, scuba suit, which is mostly meant for you know mm-hmm. uh, checking on parts of the ship lowered down into yeah. kind of a situation. I mean, it's a tall ship; it's not like anyone's going Broop, and then ducking no, down no. over the side. But yeah, you find a scuba suit. It's pretty cool. It's a little awkward carrying around an oxygen canister. Mm-hmm. But there you go. It's pre- that yeah. cold metal's pressed up right yeah. against that. Well, and you could rib. feel it too. It's it's about half full. Cool. Like it's a little lighter than it would be full. Great. So you probably got what <laughs> twenty minutes? Maybe. Yeah. Twenty twenty five minutes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not a scuba guy, but I've 
I've held, I've cooked on a grill before, and I know what a, I know what a full propane tank feels yes. like, and a full, <laughs> yeah, and, a, and an empty one feels like. Yeah, sounds great. So this is this is a little lighter than it should be. Which I'm is glad our to take. lives are hanging in the balance based yeah. on your grilling knowledge. Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, a grill master, always a grill master. It. As you as you kind of go down the steps um, leading into the bilge, you slowly start to hear the cracking and the groaning of the ship, which is a lot more apparent down here where water pressure is bending and moving the ship in awkward ways, especially when the currents are twisting against each other. How many rounds do you have left in that gun? By my count, two. N- no. I, of uh, counting the cause you, of oh, you yeah. shooting I, it I, earlier. I mean, he could cod four times. <laughs> okay. But... I would also like to argue I am a pretty damn good shot because I've been alone this whole time. I've taken self-defense. I've taken shooting. How many bullets would you like, Ella? Did you kill it with one? Out of of the ten. No, I didn't kill it with one. Okay. (laughs) I'm not unreasonable. It was a big old eel. eel. Um, It it was a slippery little sucker, so I'll say it took three. Three shots, so seven in the clip. So seven left. Great. Write it down. You're that gun nerds. <laughs> you gun nerds and your boat nerds. Yeah, they're also <laughs> yelling, it's called a magazine, not a clip. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> actually, my business partner yelled at me that, too. Yeah, he, yeah. He's actually the most angry when they interchange it, when they use both clip and, and magazine, magazine. Oh, in, no. the same, in the same piece of fiction or the same story or right. whatever. It's like, pick one. Yeah. I'm just worried about the lamprey nerds, the ones that are going to Yeah. <laughs> Those are clearly conger eels. And the scuba and the scuba folk. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're touching yeah. lots of touchstones at this yeah. point. Um, and I don't have a full suit, by the way. I just have the harness with the tank. The harness the with the mask. The yeah. So uh, as you as you continue to go down into the 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 water line of the ship and you go into where the bilge is, you can hear as the sounds of the water are pressing upon the boat in a way that is just it's just eerie is what it is and it's dark as hell down here the only service lights you have are are small little like you know fluorescents ones, yeah. that are little hang-ons and most of them have been busted up or broken at this point because of the water um either slosh again um or just clanging against sight even in little metal cages um but you do occasionally get small brisks of light as you walk in through um the bilge goes around so uh, you kind of go into it and you and you hear is mostly just the sounds of your own footfalls clanging against the metal catwalks as you kind of come along to the side of the ship and you almost feel like you can see the metal just like like moving into it as <laughs> it's just you know this thing is just holding on for what it's worth and uh yeah, you're in the bills. What do you want to do? I want to leave. <laughs> Hello? Are you are you down here? I I heard you on the intercom. Sky? I'm Robert. You kind of hear a, a loud kind of coughing. <coughs> hi, hi, Ella. Robert, where? What happened? You've been missing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like people so much, you know? I hear you, buddy. Um, but you just disappeared. Yeah, I will. When, um, when we started taking on all of those civvies, those people from the cruise ship, uh, I decided I would bide my time and wait rather than, well, deal with what it looks like you all had to deal with, which was, um, a whole lot of everybody killing each other. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so, I decided staying down here was easier. We're, we're, we're trying to get to land. Uh, I saw it from when I was up above. But yeah, yeah. There's, did, there's yeah. a real big wave coming. I don't know if you can yeah, feel that. Did you, buddy? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. See you. Listen, but you're not you're not helping. Okay. I'm trying to help you. Well, uh, I'm just trying to share my information. You don't need to get sassy with me. Yeah. Well, I'm not the one holding on to a pregnant cat right now. Okay. So. All right. Um, let's try to just that. all calm down a little bit. Yeah. You don't like people or cats. You don't, we're not totally sure about you, but I, if we're all in this together now, okay, this, this is, this is a team. Let's treat it like one. Okay. Why is it safer down here? Can I ask you something? Yeah. Are you a bad person? Am I a bad person? Have you done bad things? 
Yeah, I'm human. Everybody's done. What's bad the worst things. thing you've ever done? The worst thing I've ever. What's done? What's the worst thing you've ever done on this time, on this planet? <laughs> I, I, you, you want me to be honest with you? Yeah, I want you to tell me right out. Why, why would I ask the question if I didn't want an answer? Uh, I gave up. I gave up. I gave up on everything. I gave up and I just, I just let life happen. I didn't try to live it. And, 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 and it's why I'm here. It's why I'm stuck on this boat with, with the cat guy and, 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 and whatever the hell you are. It's why I'm here right now. That's, that's the worst thing that I've done. Okay. I can trace it all back to that. All right. What's the worst thing you've done? Oh, I've done far worse than that. And I can tell you there might still be a chance for you yet. But, um, you found land, you said? I mean, I, I saw it, which I feel like that's a, an accomplishment in itself. You can't see shit out there. It's all dark on dark. Well, let's make for land then, shall we? That's the current you know? plan. Great. Well, uh... Can we get there faster? I... We've got some big waves coming our way, and unfortunately, they're going to hit us from the side. Is there anything you can do to stabilize us down here? At that point, you actually hear the kum, 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 kum of the like engine yeah. start to shudder a little bit as mm -hmm. you suddenly feel more than anything the vibrations of the ship as you just kind of hear Robert shout out, shit, oh. That, that's the engines. That's the engines. And he runs off and basically kind of leaves the okay. four of you behind. He starts heading towards the back of the ship. So, uh, the aft. And, uh, yeah. Somebody help him? Run after him. All right, Ellie, you run after him. Carter. Yeah. Ellie. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we shouldn't stay together at this instance. I feel like we should probably... I mean, he said the bilge is safe. We're in the bilge. But, I mean, certainly make sure you're always holding on to something. I'm not sure he's safe. You still have that bayonet. Uh -huh. Hold on. Well, I don't want to leave her oh, well, she's right alone yeah, with him. Right. Yes, I'll be. Yeah. got to go. Yeah. So uh, you kind of all stumble off, and you see Robert is expertly navigating um, this part of the ship as if he's been down here for a while and kind of continues to move and jump forward. And you can see at various points he has to um, get into areas that are flooded, like up to your waist at least in water. Mm. And he kind of, he at this point he would normally take a circuitous route, but he just kind of opens the doors up, lets the water just whoosh, rush right yeah. by him as he just continues to make his way as quick as he can up until the back of the engines. And by the time you catch up to him, he's kind of looking at this thing. And it, he sees the two giant motors, because it's the ship's, Ship's motors on this mm -hmm. one, like they take up whole rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're big, right? You know, and there's two major parts inside of it, and you can see that there's definitely a, a water, a water level below it. Um, but he's kind of around, and he can see he's got a flashlight, and he's kind of looking into it, and he's looking around for it, and goes fuck, 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 shit, 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 shit. He's just cursing. What are you looking for? If you tell me what it looks like, maybe why the damn you? engine stopped? Are you still? By? Did you run too? I came along, I mean, oh, okay. I think everybody came along. Yeah, yeah. So we I just was were basically like you. holding Lola up in her carrier so she doesn't, yeah. Get I mean, it'll, yeah. it'll, it floats, but I'm not taking any risks. Right, understood. So. Yeah, <laughs> the one, the run after her has winded me more than it would normally, and I've, I've, I mean, as, like, like you said, the bit. water is uh, about knee high? Uh, waist high-ish, yeah. Waist high-ish, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, leaned and bent over like face right above the water getting as much crouching as I can to just yeah. be like <sighs> right and so Howie definitely lags behind at this point and Robert just seems to be sussing over this thing as he's looking over the engine and goes oh it's... hell is there anyone else on this ship we were gonna search it but we didn't get to search the whole thing <sighs> fuck he just kind of turns the light and goes you can see he's doing some math in his head. He goes, no, 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 we're not going to make it. What do you mean? We're coasting right now off of whatever this, our engines were able to give to us. If you said there's land, the soonest that you could see it is 
before the swell's actually going to hit us. So we either need to get this engine moving and up and running, or we're going to capside right into that swell. I felt it. We went, I even, I've never felt something that literally lifted someone up and <coughs> dropped us down, not in all of my times. Okay, okay, so we believe you. What do, what do we need to do to, to, to fix this? What can we do to help? What, what are we missing? He takes some time to look over and goes, well, someone's clearly taken a major part inside of here, and he points towards this little, um, uh, part of the engine it looks like he lit they literally looks like someone grabbed it and ripped it right off So either it's somewhere around here in the bills or they took it topside So we need that part or we need to get a replacement part from the extra supplies which are in Can, can you describe what it looks like he roughly? gives you he gives you a description of it. Okay. It's it's a it's Without getting too into the details here, it's into spangle the here, it's a spangle jammer. <laughs> um, the old spangle jammer. But it's a, it's, it's ostensibly a, a major part of the wiring, not the yeah. wiring, of like the, 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 the fuel injection or something. Or what's well, if it's a steam? If it's a World War II, it'd be a steamer, uh, like an oil steamer, probably. God damn it! I hate being wrong in the circumstances. It is a vital part <laughs> to making boots. the ship run. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Right? That's, that's uh, the information we need. The MacGuffin Spangler. The MacGuffin mm -hmm. Spangler. Yeah, yeah, Spangle Jammer. Robert tells you that there's a part of, well, the gear system inside of the engine that either has been ripped out or has been removed. And he can't tell quite how or what, but there is definitely spare parts in the ship probably being stored not terribly far from where you are now, but your window is likely closing to be able to get it together, and then hell if anyone can even try to install it. Like, he's him and or Ella is probably the most qualified to be able to install it. Um, I have keys to everything. Right. I've got the captain's keys. Yes. I am going to, I will go look for the piece. He's described it to me, right? right? And I will, like, if anybody wants to come with me as backup, because obviously if somebody took that piece, they might still be here. They might not have made it off with the other group. Right. Um, I don't know. Part of me feels like you need to stay with Robert because he trusts you more and you know him. But I know where I'm going. I know mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. That's true. I have the keys. So does anyone want to stay with Robert? I, I, I could stay with Robert. Is Robert I, staying yes. in the boat? Like he's staying with by the engine? In the engine room. Robert, will yeah. you stay here in the engine room while yeah, I just, go grab the piece? Yeah. I, if that's if that bulge or if that swell is coming, don't take your time. I won't. I'm a liability. I can stay with Robert and Lola if you want. Oh, okay. Oh shit, then I'll go. I'm with you. I'm moving at about half speed right now with my ribs, so I'll stay with Robert, keep him company. We'll wrap those as soon as we get this. Uh, I'll give him the bayonet. Right. So okay. you've got it. So Kirk, you have the bayonet. We're yeah. we're beyond not trusting Robert at this point. So we, we, yeah, we don't have yeah. we don't have time. We I'm, I'm not worried about out. the guy trying to fix the boat. I'm worried about the guy that took the piece. So I'll give I'll give you the bayonet okay. to have. And I'll take Lola. And I'll okay. Keep the, I'll keep the. I'll try to. I'll, I'll get up as, on something that I can, and uh, uh, and open the lid and pet Lola. Mm -hmm. What are what are you, what is what are you rolling for? Go get the piece. To go get the piece. Okay. Yeah. And we're and we're both going with you. Yeah. That's the point. Okay. Oh, I thought you were staying. Okay, cool. <laughs> you yeah. guys are making me nervous. Yeah, Howie's staying instead. There we go. Okay. One and one. One and one. That's all we need. A little bit. Howie, you feeling great? Ooh, looks like we have... Going on, feeling strong. All right, that's the first die roll, which means I don't have anyone to counter with. Um, Ella, so tell me what happens. Um, I've I've been on this boat long enough, and we did a, we did a tour of it. Um, so I can traverse, you know, all of the pieces sticking out a little more easily than they can. So I'm running up a little more quickly, a little more ahead. Um, and there's a couple of, of turns outside the bilge, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a right, then a left, and then a right before I get to the storage area. Got it. Um, it's going to take me... Uh, a few seconds fumbling with the keys because I have a lot of them. So many of them. And uh, obviously timing is of the essence. And then I'm just going to calm myself down like I do when I have to perform surgery. Mm -hmm. Remember that I am in control of my physicality, of my mental and emotional being. And I look at the keys and I realize they're labeled. I get the right one, and I open the door. All right. And as soon as you feel the 
latch turn and you hit the latch open, you feel as the door just slams against you with huge amount of weight and it throws you against the other side as water just starts pouring out over and over again as the flooded room just kind of cascades and you feel that kind of weight of water press up against you as you see as small parts and things just start flooding out with the water everywhere as it starts laying out all across and you see something languid and huge just <laughs> just as it's kind of coming inside and it's being flown out with the water at the moment as just everything is around and uh, Carter it's going to try to lash a tentacle straight towards you as it is flooding down okay. the side of the building. Uh, I, I'm going to try to block it so yeah. see if it Keep it from reaching anybody else. Okay, go for it. Hold it against you. I mean, if it's gonna get me, it's gonna get me. I can keep it from getting my friends. Ooh, not today. Two nice. sixes and zero ones. Not today. Uh, not creature. today. Not today. <laughs> Conor I mean, Moray. <laughs> I don't think there's. I mean, there's no way I can beat it because I only have one dice. But yeah. you take narrative control. All right. So this thing is swimming on the, the, the tide of stuff as it, it poured out of this room where right. the, as the water levels And it's are, not are a fighting. giant 10, 15 foot one like that fell onto the deck. Yeah. It's a much smaller one. It's about six feet. Okay. Um, so I'm wrestling with it. There's a sort of small staircase off to our side in this yeah. very narrow uh, area around the bilge. And I'm just wrestling with it back and forth. It's like noodling. Yeah. And I just grab it and I shove its head like in between two rungs of some steps. Yeah. And I can hear like bones in it breaking and stuff yeah. like that. It's more and, cartilage. And yeah. And it's yeah. and I basically wedge it in there and hold it until it stops moving. As you hold it yeah. in there, you can feel as like its segmented body. It's like thrashing. It's kind of thrashing around and you can hear whispers. Like human whispers? Human whispers. Okay. Seem to be just radiating from it. And as it just kind of continues to kick and move around, you kind of feel as it, as you rung it in there. And it doesn't have a neck. Uh huh. So it's more that you just are holding into place and you can kind of feel it's, it's, I mean, it's like a, you're wrestling with a boa, like a giant anaconda at this point. And its tentacles are trying to wrap around your neck and they've yeah. around your arms and you've gold into it. But, I mean, you're holding it there. If you want to kill it, someone's going to have to kill it. Yeah, I, I'm holding it. Someone else is going to have to kill it. Do you have the bayonet? Do you want to get it? I do have the bayonet. I, I just, I, did you hear? Did you hear those voices? Like human voices coming from it? Human, do you have? You have the gun. I'm not. I I've been thrown up against. That wasn't in my head, right? The, the door hit me. Yeah. So I'm I'm a little uh, disoriented. Disoriented. Yeah. Um, and I were how many feet away from each other are we at this point? Did I mean, you're. Right I think we're all right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all okay. next to each other. Um, I'm going to throw you the gun as I see the piece. Bayonet. Oh, you see the piece just swim by? Swimming by, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, I, well, that seems like the most immediate conflict as it roll into it. You've got a hole under the thing at the moment. I want to see you die for the piece. Okay. We're handling the eel situation. Come on. <laughs> we got this? Nope. Oh, But I do have a one. You do. Do you want to burn it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I am very pragmatic. And so you toss, I don't want to capsize. You toss the gun and you go for it. Oh, come on. I don't roll well. Uh, yeah. All right. So close. Shit. Uh, that ends that. Sorry. Seven candles, seven truths. The world is dark. Most importantly, Ella, you weren't able to grab the piece in time as it just is just following the current downwards is just out of your reach. But that being said, you have the first truth. I will swim under to catch up to the piece and grab it. Is it is it that much water or not that much? How about, let me, do you mind if I adjust just a, a little bit? All. So the idea being that you will follow it and as it dives into a pool of water where the bilge is, 
your if you would like your truth to be, you will dive head first into That sounds the, very dangerous. Well, <laughs> dive into the water to where the bilge is in order to get the piece, just to follow it. Like if you're going to jump, you basically would have to leap off of what I'm trying to interpret your truth is because there's a consequence because grabbing it was a failure. Mm -hmm. but if you want to jump from the level you're onto into the bilge water in order to grab it. Is that is that what I'm hearing from you? Well, the way I set it up, it was like we were just on the same level right. turning uh, different corners. But now that corners. situation has changed. Um, so what is the situation now? Um, sure, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll jump in the water. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Okay. And grab it. And grab it. Grab after it. Well, okay. You're gonna, can't do that? You're going to jump for it. Oh, fuck. So. Okay. <laughs> you can't resolve a failure with the truth. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hmm. It's just the name of the game. Um, um, it's actually called Ten Candles. Mm. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thanks, Alton. Uh, speaking of which, Carter, you're the next truth. Uh, the next truth is... Uh, Lola is starting to go into labor. Oh, oh right. there we go. Ooh. I don't know that, because I'm not there. Of course not. But, I mean, Howie would probably notice. Howie. Um, I noticed this and have that panicked moment of, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. But when I do, and I, my blood pressure starts going up, and I start breathing heavier and heather, that, that pain gets real intense, and I start coughing, and I see blood, and I'm actually, that, the, the, it's not just a crack rib. It, okay. it did, in fact, puncture. It did puncture something. Yeah, it punctured something, and I'm, I'm there's, it's not a lot of internal bleeding, but I'm bleeding internally. But you're bleeding. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, this is not a good thing. You're bleeding internally. Um, when coughing and getting the blood onto your hands, you drop Lola in the igloo onto the ground. Five. Go ahead, sir. Oh, man. Lola's not pregnant. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh Dude. Gee. What? No. Oh, Jay. No way. Okay. Uh, I hate you so much. Oh, my oh, God. Gee. Ella. Legendary, man. That was legendary. <laughs> well, Jake Sick just ruined man. my life. Oh. Hard truths. Oh, God. Name of the game, hard truths. <laughs> What Jake said is a lie. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> She's Go triple back. pregnant. <laughs> Can I resolve it now? <laughs> Can I find it yeah, now? Sure. Okay. If that's what you want. If that's how you want to get into it, then you say you find the piece. If that's what you want, the easy way out. <laughs> I do. I want the easy yeah, way out. Right. Find the piece. I right. find the piece. You find the piece in the water. Then Carter, last truth. Uh, the last truth, um, there is, even if we get this engine going again, mm -hmm. in between where we're going and where we are is a monolith. Great. There's a monolith on the way. On the way. Right. All right. Seven candles, seven truths. Uh, some people are still in the deck, but... Ella, you've dived down back into the bilge and have managed to grab the piece with with not so much as maybe a head bump across the bottom of the ship or somewhere, but you are definitely banged and bruised up as you try to lift yourself back up to the railing and pull yourself up. Kirk and Howie, or Kirk, you are, uh, you're basically, are you following Ella or from where she is because she kind of dove into it or are you handling Carter and the uh, eel situation right now. Could have used your truth for that, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had to make my cat into a, a, a host for something. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful. It was more fun that way. It was <laughs> always take the more fun route. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, serve the story. Um, <laughs> you monster. <laughs> serve the story. Um. Oh man. Uh. I'm gonna try to shoot the eel. Great, shoot it. 
shoot the lamprey eel-like thing, which is at this point definitely has its tentacles wrapped around Carter's neck and under its arm, and it's trying so hard to rip it off right now. Uh, close your eyes. Okay. <laughs> Ew. All right, one for me, and uh, you may take narrative control. Okay, so I look back and see that Ella has gone down into the build, so I at least know where she's going, but to me, the immediate concern is getting the, the eel, or whatever the hell it is, right. off of Carter. So with without thinking too much about it, I just turn, I steady myself, I aim uh, as close as I can to <laughs> what might be its head without putting him in danger, Carter. Right. and uh, I I just unload the gun. You unload the gun. I unload it. Oh, it's right. so loud. It's so, echoing. Uh, king, yeah. king, king, king. Yeah. And you can hear both of you. It's just like your ears are ringing at this stage as mm. you just unload all seven shots directly mm. into this thing. Yeah, and I, you, I let go of it, and it starts to drift away from me, I guess. The water is still sussing out from yeah. the main supply room. So it kind of gets caught into the wave and you watch as it kind of like bounces off of the staircase as it just down and that whispering that you kind of heard while you were so close to it and holding into it, it just fades away as it fades away down onto the staircase and just crashes against the, the catwalk. Yeah, I was kind of squinting my eyes as it went away. I didn't want too much detail. I'm like, I was afraid I was gonna see a face in it or something, so. Right. So you no. just closed your eyes. Well, I didn't close them, but I kind of narrowed them enough that like I was just just enough to see what its general silhouette was, or that it wasn't alive and still going to attack me. But I'm I'm very I'm very scared of right it. So uh, uh, even in death, Ella, you 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 grab the piece and you meet up back with uh, with Carter and Kirk as you head back into the main area where the engine is. And how at this point you can see that that. Lola is just like yowling, like as it's kind of writhing um, inside of its igloo a little. So the igloo's, igloo's floating on the little body of water we have in the well, building. It's just, it's actually just kind of, it's actually more. I would say that's right because I did say it fell. It kind of like fell and tilted a little bit, and so you kind of watch as some of the the quilting, like you said, stuff kind of poured out, and yeah. Lola kind of rolled onto her side kind of rolling out of the igloo a little bit onto the grating of the metal baby. area. That's right there. And she's just kind of like, her has her arms up as she's kind of writhing on her back a little bit. And she's just yowling as loud as she can. Just as she is just, um, well, a cat that is screaming. Um, I'm going to give the piece to Robert mm -hmm. <clears throat> and hear and notice this. I had a cat and yeah. being a surgeon right. have some knowledge of, yeah. of or I can hear the this, basics. We can hear this yowling? Oh, We're yeah. back in the room now. Yeah. Oh, okay. The minute I heard yowling, I'd be running for so, her. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, this is not right. Yeah. Um, and so as you bend down, Carter, to kind of like comfort Lola. It's okay, baby. It's she okay. She just takes her teeth and just sinks them straight into the meat of your thumb. As you I, just her. Her. I just so, let her. I just let her. It's okay. Just, just. And you, she kind of holds. Get it out. Get it out. And she just kind of scratches, and she is pulling onto you, and she lets go again, but she's still yelling. Ella, it's okay, sweetie. It's it, gonna be fine. It's it, gonna be fine, honey. Right, as you, Ella. As you kind of get closer to her, you can see she's she's twisting and contorting her body, in like a way that, to by your medical profession opinion, she doesn't seem to be regular for a cat. And as you, is, is she okay? It did. This is not right. We should get her to the. Med Bay. Robert, can you put this piece back in? Uh, you, uh... Yeah, Robert hasn't even paid attention to this process at all. He's already putting the piece yeah. back in. Great. Okay, um, I <clears> want to run to the Med Bay and put her under... Scoop the cat up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with her. And you take it to the trauma bay. Yeah, I, I'm carrying. I'm carrying her in my arms. The basically, first patient of this process, and you're yeah. scratching you and just. I don't care. I don't care. She can shred me up. Mm. And then you just get her onto the table, and you know you can see she's still just. She's not even paying attention to kind of where her equilibrium is. She just seems like she wants to fall off the table more than anything else. Yeah, I'm. I'm just holding her to keep and her. In holding position. her, and as you're holding onto her, you can feel movement in her belly. You can feel something just pressing oh. up against her skin. Oh, the joy of life! Just literally oh, pushing up against her. That is oh, just a little sweetie. And you can see distension 
as small parts of her skin are being pushed out. Oh, you have a lot bit. of little babies in there. Maybe so. she's got like five or I four put, or five. I want to put her under and perform surgery. All right, so you want to pull, put her under. Uh, is, I could is, probably do it with an injection. Is, right. are, 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 I, I know you're a doctor, but is it one of those things where like, if you know doctor stuff, you also know... I also... She, she's going to be okay, right? I also had cats. I don't know. This is... This is not a normal birth. I have to go in there. She's it, in distress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna watch as she goes to put her under. Is it successful? Are we all up there right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, unless Except you told me otherwise. Us? Yeah. Except for Robert. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah I would have needed a little help Ow. from you to get up. There. Right. So I would have helped you up. I want to go check on Robert okay. to make sure the parts back in. Sure. So we can get this thing going. Sure. So do you want to just when, stay when down he, there? Then when she starts done? to put uh, Lola under, uh, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him his bayonet back, and I'm going to go down and check on Robert. Okay. Robert's almost done putting in the piece at this point. Ella, is your Performing surgery on this thing. Can't handle it. <laughs> I know the silence is definitely. <laughs> it's awful. Oh man! Oh no! I want to peek inside it's his head. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. This is fixable. Mm -hmm. Super fixable, buddy. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. Ella, as you lay this cat down and you can see this distension as this thing is uh, writhing back and forth and Carter, you're comforting her with every little bit that you can. You put the mask on her and you kind of um, watch as Lola just drifts into just unconsciousness, just goes right out and goes into her. And you take the scalpel and you just carve it right along the front of her, her belly, you watch as an arm just lifts itself right out of her tiny belly, and you can see it has long, spindly fingers as another arm just pulls it and it splits Lola's belly open as it presses its head out, and it has a humanoid face onto it, like a oh, skull I'm with a back, mean. and it slowly starts to pull itself out, but it has long, long arms, and it seems to have dark, just black eyes. It just lets out a screech, just <laughs> as it slowly pulls its legs out, and it's pushing, it's taking the mane of this cat, and it's just like wrenching it open as it's pulling up its wings, and then suddenly you see just just two pairs of wings, two pairs, that's four wings, just kind of lift up at its side as it starts to flutter, and it just kind of lops itself off as it goes into a gallop on the grating of the floor. I don't have enough time to react to that? I'm just telling you that it's that it's wrenching itself how, out. So, how do you react to that? Uh, uh, I would, I mean, because I'm right in there yeah, with a yeah, scalpel. Yeah. I scalpel <laughs> right up in the fucking Right through your, right the here. You just yeah. right into its, Get right the. into its face. That escalated so fast. I'm like cupping Lola's head in my hands. Mm -hmm. Is she still alive at all? She's dead. Super dead. Oh god, Ooh, I'm just sobbing. Then I'm freaking out. <sighs> so you scalpel. No, I'm need to take and see if I can. Hey. Yeah. So you scalpel this thing, and you kind of lift your blade straight up into its mouth, and it kind of screeches as it takes one of its, it kind of screeches as it takes one of its claws and rakes it down, and it takes your hands the right where your scalpel is, and you feel with an incredible amount of strength, it just push 
your hand down with the scalpel into it as it lifts its head up, but then it loses that strength and it goes right back into its head again as it kind of flops down. Yeah. Do you hear the engines are now starting to kick back up and rumble again as you're holding this thing like a kebab. I've got Lola's body and I'm I'm wrapping it up in her shawl right. from her thing. And I'm just holding her and I'm on the steps and I'm just rocking back and forth and I'm just crying. Yeah. I'm gonna go over to you and um ask to hold her. It, 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 and this is this was she didn't deserve this. This is how, how did this? How did this happen? This I don't care if anything happens to people. Like this is probably all our fault anyway. But like this is this is she deserved better than this. I know. I've never been able to really find somebody I could connect with. And this whole time, all I've been worried about is my cat, Athena. That stupid brat. Is all I ever cared about. And I know she's gone. You don't, you don't know that. I mean, I, I ran a, a whole... Everybody's gone. No, I mean, the humans probably are. But, I mean, she she probably got out. And she's... Who knows? The, the world will go on. Maybe, maybe the cats will be the next ones to evolve. And, and they'll do a better job of it than, than, than we did. But I, I mean, part of me was hoping that like that this was just something that was affecting our civilization. But if it if they can be born out of out of other animals, then this is it. We fucked everything up. This is this is all bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't. <sighs> she was the only one who was ever there for me, so I I know how you feel, and I'm sorry. I mean, I've only known her. I I met Lola on the cruise ship. So, you know, like... And I met her days after you, and look at me, so... Yeah, yeah, but uh, we need to... Uh, I know this is going to sound dumb, but I really just... I want to just keep her. Can I just keep keep her until we can decide what, what to do? I don't... I think whatever was in her that was bad is gone now. And you look back to where whatever that thing was, and you see that it's gone. Son of a bitch. The body's not there anymore. The body of the, the Howie, creature. Howie, did you see where it went? Uh, Howie's passed out. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, between, between, not like he's not a coma, but between the intense amount of pain from humping his way up here and all that, all the exertion that took, and then seeing that it just the lights went out for a second. Okay, I'm gonna run over to Howie. Um, he's bleeding. Shit. He's uh, bleeding without a puncture wound. You can see that there is um, there's a bulge kind of right where his ribs are that seem to be pressing out of his skin a little bit. And you can definitely see the um, the light speckle of blood on his lips. Mm-hmm. So, Kurt. Uh, well, I'm gonna tell uh, Robert it was, oh, that's right, you went back with I'm Robert. with Robert. Right, and so you actually were there at the moment when Robert came in. <coughs> Just yeah. Put the thing back up, and you saw as the motors were starting to rumble right. and kick back up again. <clears throat> and he kind of pats this thing and goes, You have a chance, you know. Of all those assholes upstairs, this one included, you're maybe the one who could have a chance. What? Just, I'm just telling you now. <clears throat> If you see an opportunity, just don't hesitate, all right? Don't hesitate. And he kind of leaves you with that cliffhanger as he starts walking up towards the main deck up to where the cabin is, where the, no, not the cabin, the... Um, the uh, infirmary. Uh, not the even the infirmary. Uh, goes back up to where the... Um, bridge. The bridge? Yes, wow. <laughs> well, we do have a, I mean, I'm, I'm out, so I don't know this, but... We know that there's a monolith coming. Well, sure, but that's the point, is Robert's going up yeah. to at least to where the bridge is at this stage, and we'll resolve that when it's time. Okay. But, um, um, R- Robert, where are you going? To the bridge. 
to maybe right. get us to one point in which we can die on dry land. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let, I, I'll, I won't be far behind because we think there's still someone on the ship. So let me go tell the others. We got it up running. We're heading to the bridge. I'll meet you up there. You do that, Kurt. Okay. Uh, so I run to the door of the surgical bay, and I see him passed out. I see him holding a dead cat, and there's blood everywhere. There's blood everywhere. And I come in excited because we got the engine going. I'm like, hey, what the fuck happened in here? Kirk, I need you to help me get Howie up on a on a bed. I need to, I need to fix him. Okay, so I go over and lift him up. Yeah, place him down, Ella. It's time to bleed him. Ooh, a lot of medical things happening. Yeah, under mm-hmm. a lot of lot of a lot of pressure. Oh, one, one, one for me. Did you? Oh, I get a chance for this oh, actually. Lose the <laughs> mm-hmm. Not for me. So it's for you. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, clean up, clean the area, um, and feel around for the issue because right. we never really got to talk about what happened. Yeah, the the issue is is that he he's he's been walking around with something jutting into his side, <laughs> and with as much running as he's been doing, and not staying still, he's aggravating some kind of internal injury. Mm-hmm. So I'll have to open him up. Yep. And you drain it. You basically let the blood that isn't going anywhere, you give it a place to go to, and you kind of let it out, but you make sure it's sterilized and clean. You use the supplies that are readily available there to patch him up with a bit of a patch and <sighs> wrap them ribs till the day is long. Wrap them ribs <laughs> pressure, till the day pressure, is pressure. long. Pressure, <laughs> pressure, Yeah. It's not going to feel great. Mm-mm. Yeah, but that's... Uh, yeah, he's a he's a he's a little little mummy now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, how would, how would you like to wake up from consciousness at this point while she's working on you? Sure. All right. Yeah. You kind of flutter awake as she's finishing up the bandages. Uh, so as I flutter awake, the last image I saw was the horror that was coming out of Lola, and I that's my first reaction of like right. like you coming out of like <gasps> so I immediately try to. Mm-hmm. Fight my way out. Good, good. The thing. But the pain, and it's just like, oh, like I almost go out again, but I, I, I catch myself, and I'm like, what? Well, where is it? Where, where, where did it go? Right, Kirk forgot to mention. Um, there's a four-winged monstrosity that came out of Lola, and um, I thought I killed it, and now its body's gone. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we're like in a really terrible 80s B-horror movie. Or a really good one. I guess it depends on your perspective. Mm -hmm. Is he okay? Are you okay? Is everybody okay? I'm never going to be okay. I'm good enough for now. (coughs) I've given him a little bit of morphine, but not enough that he can't react and move. Yeah. So just there, just to, to keep, like you said, keep the edge off. Yeah. So as you uh, kind of finally finish bundled up, you can hear Robert coming up on the comm into the main goes, uh, Ella, we have a small problem here. We need you to come to the bridge. Over. Um, on my way out, I'll press well, the comm. Should I go if he's got a medical problem? I'm good. I'm, I'm, she's stabilized me enough to get mm-hmm. back up on my feet. I'm just in pain okay. at this point. Between the morphine and the bandages and the, and the bloodletting, I'm, I'm about as good as one could be in the situation. Okay. Come on, Kirk. Let's go to the bridge. Yeah. I'll grab a crutch if there's one handy. Okay. Maybe to give myself a little bit of... Carter, weight. I'm so sorry. The moment that you were hoping to create in this situation has been perverted in this circumstance. Yeah. I'm honestly willing to honor the circumstances in which Lola gave birth as the moment. But the question that I have to ask you is, did it give you hope? Can I pull him aside and talk to him? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, You're still holding. I'm like rocking in place and like holding her body, Um, basically. You head up there. I'll see you in a second. I'll go up with her. Um, 
Carter. Um, <laughs> I'm so incredibly sorry. What, what if it... What if it was... I mean, I heard those voices from the eels. What if I I did this to her? Maybe maybe me taking care of her is no. why she got in this situation. No, Carter, you, we, we're all in a pretty bad situation here. And um, I just, I thought if I could just take care of her, that that would be something that I'd have some control over. And I couldn't even fucking do that. But Carter, you did. Man, you did. You did take care of her. Look at her. I know, but <laughs> look, sometimes sometimes the, the final score is not is what's as important as knowing that you did your damnedest to win. And in all this shitty, shitty mess, you found a bright spot in it. In this I mean, world with no light, you found one. That's something to that's something to revel in, man. And and I don't think you need to feel bad about what happened because this kind of thing is happening to everyone, everything. But is that supposed to make me feel better? I don't know if it's supposed the, to make you I, feel better. I appreciate I appreciate what you're trying to do here, but I think I just wanna I think I just wanna be alone. I think I just wanna die here. I think I just, I think this is it. I think this is it for me. I don't think I've got anything else left. I don't know. I can't, I can't help anybody. Carter, I can't you... even help a fucking cat. It's the only thing I'm good at. I, I, I can't help people. Carter, you've already helped us. You helped us earlier. You steered the ship into the, into the wave, which if you hadn't have done that, none of us would still be here for that. We wouldn't have the hope that we have, but we do because you fought for Lola. You fought for us too, okay. and and you've and you've done your best. That's all, all all any of us can ask for. Okay, and you don't. It's not you don't have anybody. You have us. So what are we gonna do? Like what happens when we find this this signal? Well, what's what's the next thing? I need I need a goal. I need something I can think about. That if I can just get this thing, I just I need a new goal. I feel like. I mean, I man, geez, is it dumb? Is it dumb to want to bury her? No. On land? Not at all. That's what we're doing. We're gonna get our ass to land, and we're gonna give her a proper burial. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a drag on any of this sort of stuff, but it's just I, this. No, is... I understand. You've that's that's a you've suffered a tremendous loss. We all have. We all we all liked Lola. <sighs> she was very sweet. She was very sweet. She used to do this thing. You like you know when like you can see that they're smiling. Like I know they're not really smiling, but she like she would oh, smile certainly. at me. She smiled at me. Yeah. And I can't I can't get out of my head what her face was like at the end, like she was scared and I wasn't there. And I just, I gotta get that out of my head. I gotta just, I wanna replace that with her smiling face. You know, and I, okay, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good, I'm fine. It's like, I don't even, and I'm not, I can't even be mad. Like whatever that thing that came out of her, like it's probably just another animal. Like maybe that's like the next form of life or something. I can't even, I can't even get revenge. You know, like it's, t all right. Okay, we're gonna bury her, we're gonna bury her. And yeah. it's gonna be as good as it can be. Yeah. Okay, that's thank cool. you. Yeah, man. So let's we'll head back up to the bridge. Alan Howie, as you make your way up to the bridge, which is still spider-webbed from the crashing swell earlier, you can distinctly see that um, what is in front of you is a giant monolith, and it is taking up a huge portion of what is the main visible front at the moment. And on the edges of its profile, you can see the small crust of land that are laid out on either way, but um, Robert kind of breaks it to you as soon as we get him and goes, so, <clears throat> the swell's behind us. 
That's in front of us. Land is behind it. And the math doesn't add up. If we go around, the swell's going to hit us. We can't go through because it's right in the way. If we can get around behind it, won't, the, won't we have cover from it? Won't the monolith block some of the won't way? It break the swell around it? Assuming us. we get behind it in time. Well, let's the... do that. Let's stop talking <laughs> about it and just do it. I'm going straight ahead. But, you know, we lost a lot of time with the engine. So can it's we... going to literally be at the very last minute. I mean, can we throw some more stuff overboard to get get lighter or I mean what's, yeah. what's gonna no, help that's actually a great idea no that's absolutely it's toss off or anything that's extra weight so we can get a little extra speed even one knot will make a huge difference okay okay let's go I'm gonna run down to the all hands on deck to the deck and yeah. just start throwing yeah, shit I'll, yeah I'll, I'll push through the pain for this throwing pool chairs Ooh, be through the pain go easy man yeah Go easy. I have Lola I, wrapped into like we a. We can't perform surgery again nope. if we're. <laughs> yeah, but I've got Just my go hands easy, okay? roasted up yeah, yeah. Over, off deck. Um, yeah, I mean, when I say push the pain, I mean like uh, a, a pool deck chair is going to weigh ten pounds. Right. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I don't even know if I can carry the oxygen tank anymore at this point. You right. might have to take it, or you might Put have to down. take it. But yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to help. Still helping hurts. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Oh, two sixes. You one. Get one. Wow. All right. You want a challenge? Yeah, as always. Nope. Oh, no. It's all you, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I just, you know, like I'm, I'm on a crutch, and whatever I can grab with a hand is what I'm currently dragging over, right. and throwing over the side. Just, but with every move, it's yeah. excruciating. Even with yeah. the morphine, it's yeah. like, oh, it's oh. gone from a very sharp pain to a very dull pain, but it's still pain. Right. And uh, it, it hurts. You know, it's it's taken a little bit more wind out of me. But you do one. contribute. I do. And yeah. you get it out. And you easily <laughs> at this job. point, you know, the pounds add up 10 pounds, 20 mm -hmm. pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds. As the minutes tick by, you throw off everything that you possibly can that's not bolted down. At this stage, we can just see this thing looming, yeah, growing behind us. It's just, it's, it's a, it is. It's like a slow, just like a, like a wall that's just slowly just moving closer and closer. And at this mm -hmm. point, you can look up and you can still barely see the top of it. And it's, you know, it's punctuated by this ashen red sky because of the moon with its color right now. It just basically looks like this blue red blood tide that just wants to just smash down upon you. And as you occasionally toss things over, you can see moving at the same speed as you are. You can see that these things are just alongside with you and the, the dolphins going alongside the boat. Not a far analogy at this point. It would be it would be lovely if they were dolphins, but instead you just see these like wiggling worms of just things and they seem to just be surrounding you at this stage just falling alongside the boat so you make it right to where the monolith is um, and you begin to make that curve and you begin to turn um, I'm, I want to try to throw uh, one of the anchors uh, it's got like a, a chain oh, winch thing yeah. to give us a little bit of drag to swing around to make a tighter oh. turn behind the monolith. Okay, so you just into the shadow. Oh, of like the, the Batmobile shooting the grappling <laughs> hook out. Okay, okay cool. I'm yeah. thinking mainly it'll just drag us and make it easier yeah, for us yeah. to make a, a, to a, a tighter turn. Mm -hmm. There they are. I think that's yeah. a roll. That's a roll. There you go, buddy. These two bad ones. Yeah. Keep them like that. Just keep keep them where right. you found Did his moment count? I, I, his moment counted, but I think the important question of did it hope. bring hope? Okay. Right. I think despite the pep talk, uh -huh. if that if if that moment for him didn't give him hope, and I still you did not answer the question yet, so yeah, I'm willing to ask you again: Did that moment give you hope? I think I think I still have. He was able to get me back on like having some sort of purpose and stuff. Right. So yeah, I guess I think it did give me hope that I could at least accomplish that. Okay. You know. Because in that circumstance, that circumstance, circumstance then, I can give you the hope dice. The hope and he guy. already got the one out of that one. Yeah. So, so I give you, I give you the thing. Is your moment on top? Up. Was your moment on top? I'm so sorry. Was your moment on top? Oh, it was not. No. <laughs> I need it back. Your moment needs to be on top for yeah. it to be fulfilled. Oh. oh, okay. So, oh, so I don't need the die. Yeah. So, unfortunately, since the it's moment be in the same was order. not on top. All right. Yeah. I it's fair. Guys. It's fair. Yeah. 
Oh. 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 Yeah. One for me. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, 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 sorry. Sorry, y'all. Narrative control. Two sixes. Yeah, you got it. Um, all right. So you, with this babusa, you kind of like, I mean, it's one of those points. You're not going to lift the anchor up and drop it down at this point. What you're going to do is you're going to go over and, and hitch out the release. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The manual yeah. release. So you're going to hit this big lever and kind of hear as it just... <laughs> And as soon as as soon as it hits the water at that kind of speed, you kind of feel as the whole boat just boom, just like bends, and you hear actually the weight of the metal just as it bends yeah. forward, and you hear Robert go on the comms go, "What the fuck did you just do down there?" Uh, helping with the turn a bit. You're gonna you're going to literally snap the boat in half with that kind of a drag. Just oh, it's done. Get up here. And you kind of hear is like you go down and you see, and everyone who wasn't standing or lurching at one point just got shifted off to the left as they felt kind of yeah. the weight just press into it. I mean, you're already in a lot of pain anyway, but you too, it's as you're tossing things over, like um, Kurt, you 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 were tossing something over when it suddenly went in, and it it was it was barely. Uh, you just holding onto the railing that you didn't topple over for mm-hmm. the moment while you were trying to chuck stuff overboard. So, but yes, you are making that sweet right hand, a uh, little hook drift, that hook, that anchor drift. Yeah, you know. So, are we? Are, is the boat in the shadow of the this monolith now? What Absolutely. It? Okay. It's been in the shadow for a while. Let's, um, let's see if we can. And Kirk, as you begin to this. bend around the side of the monolith. As you look um, towards, and at this point, you had to cut, you, I mean, you didn't want to take a wide berth around it. You needed to get as close to it as you possibly can in order to minimize your... The time and... Yeah, yeah. the time to go into it. So you're almost alongside the monolith when you start getting into this kind of drift around this, you know, 100 story, 100 story building that's like easily just, you know, 100 by 100 you know, uh, size. So as you're going around at Kirk, you see something at the monolith. You see something that is eyeline perfectly with you. And you look at the monolith and you see a yellow light in a doorway that just seems to just be right there. And it wasn't there when you were looking for a moment, but as soon as you head, turn your head back, you see it's a bright yellow door just laid out along the slick pathway of the monolith. So, you uh, crest along. Does, is he the only one seen that? Does anyone else see this door? I'll take Uh, a I I see it now. What the f- Do we? No. No, we don't. All three of you, only Kirk sees the door. What are you talking about, man? <clears throat> there's a there's a a door. It's like a yellow. Just seriously, do you guys see that? No, man. No. Did you swallow? Did you hit your head? Did you swallow a lot of water? No, I'm. Like, it must be the monoliths must be trying to trick us. I mean, we know the monoliths are connected to these monsters and to this apocalypse or whatever. I, if you're seeing something there, I think it's trying to lure you in, man. Well, you said you heard something, right? <sighs> I heard whispers from that eel. Like human whispers. So we've heard whispers. Did you hear those whispers? No, I didn't hear any whispers. Okay, you're hearing things, you're seeing things. I, I, you really don't see that? I really don't see that. Can I call up to Robert? Oh, Robert's in the bridge still. Yeah, can point. I call up to him? Yeah, uh, on the Rob, Yeah, Robert, do you see this light on the monolith next to us? No. And he says it in a voice that seems very commanding and very bitter, almost. No. He seemed real sure about that. The, bra- the wave, did it come? Did it break around us? Oh, that's right. The, the wave's literally right behind you guys, yes. Yeah. So you can actually feel it. You're starting to get around and you're seeing this thing, Kirk, as it's kind of coming up the The bottom of the swell is starting to lift you up as you're running around the monolith, and you're actually at the point of where, if you can imagine, it's like tilting 
itself bending the uh, the you know the top of the boat towards the monolith as it's kind of cresting around. And for a moment, you're actually looking at the monolith if it's like above you more than it is like to the side of you because the swell's pushing you in such a way, and mm -hmm. it's just banking around the monolith as you're just edging along the opposite side of it and you can just tell that you're just right there so can we see any of the the intended land now that we're on the other side of this monolith yes yes you can but i think I'm trying to decide because robert's driving the boat right now mm -hmm. And so then, yeah, it's basically Robert is getting to decide whether we're going to stop and try to go into this monolith oh, or no, keep he's, going. He's, he wants us to keep going, right? He wants to keep going. He's just driving the boat as quick as he can. But he does yell, Kirk, it's now or never, man. <sighs> what is he talking about, Kirk? I don't know. How close are we to that? How close are we to it? Uh, for narrative purposes, I will say <laughs> that you could jump for it. I mean, we only got one chance for this. Kirk, I, I trust you. If you say you saw something there, I mean, we're not, we're not going to get out of this alive anyway. Maybe at least we'll learn something. I still have the gun. Yeah, it's empty. You emptied the clip. I want to throw it at the door, okay. and I want to see what it does. One die. He watches the gun just clatters along the side of the monolith and just kind of just like falls down and makes an unceremonious splash as it falls into the water as you bend around the side of the monolith. And you are now on the other side of the plinth. Six dice, six truths. Kirk, you get the first truth. It's not the last time I'll see that door. Or a door like it. Great. First truth. Ella, second truth. There are no people on the other end of that signal. Carter. Um, I can see the door now on the monolith. You can see the door. I can see the door. All right. Howie. My book uh, only has one sentence to write left. Ooh. The remainder of this swell. Oh, no, I know what my truth is. Now that you've passed this swell, you can see a large gray rock dipping from the heavens in the water. From, from the sky? From behind the swell that you just saw come on the other side, you can see the moon inside of the ocean, several miles away. Six, last one. Robert knows what's in that door. Great. Six. Candles. Six truths. You cut across the side of this monumental, just monument. Yeah. And the <laughs> swell 
I mean, this is a size of a wave, and you can see it. It's like the water is cresting all the way to the top of it, almost even eclipsing it. Mm. But it's just making runway on either side of it as it just acts like a perfect break for the wave that's coming into it. And it doesn't even look like it cares. You hear no snapping, you hear no pressure, you see no strain on this thing at all. And it just stands like a perfect bastion against this monumental, colossal, I mean, extinction-sized wave that you've managed to get right behind. And more than anything, it now generates a backflow that just pushes you forward at double, triple the speed you were going to now that you've made it along the other way. And you ride this bitch all the way to land. As you hold on for dear life, the last thing that you all remember before you black out from unconsciousness is hitting the bank of the island with such force mm -hmm. that you all are slammed in front of wherever you were despite bracing on and like getting into a car accident going 30 miles an hour, you just whack straight into uh, whatever you're holding on to. <coughs> and you wake up to the sound of seagulls. What's the ground like that we're on? Are we still on the still boat? boat? You're still on the boat. Okay. I mean, one of you may have been flung off the ship if you'd like to take that position. It, I, have we heard animals in this last few weeks? Nope. Yeah, I it's actually a week. wake up thinking I've died because the seagulls are such a foreign sound to me at this point mm -hmm. that the only logic that my brain can come up with in this state is that I've died and I'm, I, I'm in, I've moved on. Like... <laughs> Like, it doesn't make sense that I'm hearing this sound. Right. I assume it's some kind of, like, rope swinging or, or something that's causing a creaking sound. I don't hear, you know, birds chirping. I think it's metal rubbing against metal because right. I'm the same way. I'm like, there's I, no I way. I can say I was the one who was flung from the ship. So right. I, I get up and I check sand all covering you. I check Lola's body. Is it? Lola's body's still there. Okay. It's mangled and broken even more than it was beforehand. But um, she, I mean, it's good that she's bundled up. Yeah. And this is, does it seem like normal sand or does it seem like moon sand? It is a black gray sand. Okay. Yeah. And if you take a moment to put your hand mm -hmm. and rake it, you will see golden sand underneath. Okay. All right. Uh, land, you... land ho. Um, I'm gonna get up and check everybody. Um, we're missing Carter. Um, but does everybody just seem to have superficial injuries? Yeah, everyone seems to just have bruises, bumps. Robert is gone. Oh, he's shit. gone. Yeah. He is not on the bridge. He is gone. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, <clears throat> I'm used to getting hit like that. I actually take the, like, scuba tank and turn it on and take some oxygen <laughs> to help with my breathing. Yeah, well, it is pure oxygen. Well, it's a good mix. I and that, yeah, and that, and that feels good. For a second, that feels good, and I'll shut it off. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start yelling for Carter. Carter. You hear Carter. your name yelled out. I'm down here. Just, just give me a moment. I gotta finish something. I got thrown off the ship. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. It's there's sand down here. We're we're on land, technically. Okay. Well. You got the rope to maybe help pull us down. Yeah, I mean you could tie it off. I mean you went in at 30 miles an hour. You went in into we're inland. Mm -hmm. inland. So at this point, wrapping it would just allow you to all rappel down. That's what I. That's basically. What I'm, uh, I would actually like to go to the. Doors that I have the key to yeah. and pick up some emergency food and medical supplies. Let's see how much is left. <laughs> <laughs> is the thing we killed edible? Uh, I, I it did all slop off. Ooh, okay. For me. 
And it begins. One and one. <laughs> so you grab a hold of medical supplies enough that you can fill at least the bag a bag of which you can carry with. Mm-hmm. So and and some dried Rashes, foods, MREs, or yeah. yeah, all of it. Great. And then canned goods. You. I've been digging. Yeah. I've been digging a grave, basically. Right there on the beach. Yeah. Great. And at this point, I've I've gotten down below to the golden sand. Yep. And I go till I've got about maybe two, two feet deep or so, mm-hmm. uh, and then I want to I want to place Lola's wrapped up body, in it, and okay. then start methodically just wordlessly just putting all the sand back on top of it. As you kind of put Lola back onto the sand, you kind of lay her kind of broken and misshapen body onto it, and you start pushing the sand on top of her to kind of have this makeshift grave Mm -hmm. and um, there's still that conflicting concept of why, you know, and it's so hard to get the image of what came out of her, out of your mind. Um, And at that point, you, uh, you do hear whispering just that same kind of sound that you heard when you were so close to that eel. And there's something that's just permeating your brain and I'm gonna write to you what you hear. I had a narrative idea of what I might hear, but I, uh, I, I like, uh, I'm, <laughs> let's see, maybe I'll guess. Maybe it'll be like with you guys. Like yeah. We'll see. Oh, man. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I thought it was rad. <laughs> it was a phenomenal story choice. That is, a, it was, a, it was phenomenal. an phenomenal. I, I hate, effects. I hate Gloria you and love you John for Carpenter's it. John Carpenter's the thing. I saw that thing bust out of there, and I went, I know exactly how this looks. You just <laughs> broke my and my character. Jonesy's supposed to make it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> None of us. Yeah, but then they just removed all of that in the second movie. <sighs> You mean the third movie? Third movie, of course, yeah. The point of it. Even poor Bishop had, had to be in pieces. Rough. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. <laughs> You've had a few years. Is that what you were thinking? <laughs> Not at all. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. Do you want to write to me what you were going to thinking, and we can have a discussion about it secretly? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Have all right. some notes. You didn't bring enough for the uh, rest while, of the While this is going on, yeah. I am going to try to look for... Um, uh, to see just something, anything really, a scrap of board, anything that we can tie the rope to once we're down there and use right. to like pull the oxygen tank behind us so one of us doesn't have to. Oh, I see. It. You want to make a little makeshift. Yeah, perch. just a sled, basically yeah. a sled. Because we're on sand, and as long as we're on yeah. sand. Well, do you want to use one wheels. of those boards? The One of those. Don't we have the gurneys? Yeah, the gurneys. Oh, yeah. Body boards? Yeah, to just strip the mattress off of it and, and use the bayonet punch holes in it. Sure. And make a sled. So the first thing you notice when you kind of get down onto the water is that you do notice that the island looks like it was just hit with a tsunami. Like, trokin trees are everywhere. And things are just snapped and moved around. And it's basically just foliage is just laid out all across whatever's left of this little island. And you do, you can definitely tell that you are, I want to call it like a deserted island. But you are definitely on a small island, not far. Um, I like them both. Yeah, they're both they're both good. I think I think I think literally, you hear both on top of each other. Okay. Yes. But the the voice that was telling me your thing is is not. The voice I'm describing. No, you hear you the hear the one that you wrote. Okay, but you also hear the one that I wrote. Okay. Yes. So let's just merge them. Yeah. <laughs> Is that cool with you? Yeah. Because it serves both purposes. Yeah. In my mind. Okay. As far as what it is. So. So yeah, you see me stand up after finishing patting this 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 makeshift grave down. And I look like there's some sort of hollow kind of look in my eyes. Like, I just look like I'm completely, you know, just, I'm not really there. You know. 
Um, but to answer your question, I mean, it's a broken world and this this desert island. It definitely looks. It doesn't look like the ashen, destroyed, like continent that you left and knew of when you went into it. It looks, besides being hit by a major natural catastrophe, um, it it is still land. And even though you seem to be a little higher than you would ever intend to be, uh, it is it is still still works. So great. Are we in danger of another? wave hitting this island? No, all you see is the giant celestial body inside of the water that seems to be closer every single time you look at it. I'm so it's like a reflection of the moon, but it's a place we can actually go. Is that what it seems like? I think it's the moon. I think it's the actual moon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, think it's Im- I think it's impacted. The moon okay. is in the ocean, literally. Literally oh, okay. in the ocean. Yeah. Like the bottom part of it is touching the ocean? It's breached yes. our atmosphere. Yeah. Not in the horizon, but in the planet. In right. fact, what you can see as you kind of look towards it is you do see that the area that was above you, that ashen-colored rock that mm-hmm. was around, you can see like amongst it is like a halo of like just broken and like floating rock that just seems to be around it. So it almost has this dust cloud that occasionally obscures it, but is just like a halo of just dust around it. So, Mm. yes. But that is somewhere we can go or try to go. Yeah. But the moon's behind us. Yeah. In the the miles region. behind us. Yeah, we're at the radio. We're at the what we the what island. we know it is as the radio tower. So if it, if it wasn't abundantly clear, or, and there's a lighthouse, the, and there's a lighthouse. Yeah. When the moon impacted mm. the sea, it created, it created these the waves. giant waves. Oh, that's what made the waves. Gotcha. Which pushed you all in, and now it's just moving in the water, from the coming towards us at a slow pace or something. Or it's hard to tell. Too big. Can it's huge. It's too big. The top yeah. moving on it. I'd like to look around for the seagulls that I haven't heard in weeks. You look up and you see that the island that you're on does have a. Um, it does have a little bit of a mountain that is laid out inside of it, and there does appear to actually be another monolith that's just piercing out straight from. The mountain. I won't say it's doing that thing where it's like coming straight through the mountain kind of a situation. Yeah. But it's definitely through and up. But you would have to climb up the rock face in the mountain in order to get to it. Because it can't ever be easy. And the seagulls are on the mountain. You can see a couple of them are just the kind of like circling, like birds do, just kind of floating around the mountain Kicking where it, it is, mm-hmm. just. For what it's worth. Um, well, I'm kind of looking around too, and I see the lighthouse. Oh, the lighthouse we described as well too. Yeah, mm. which looks and like it it got the shit kicked out of it. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's when I see the light come on. The light from the monolith? No, from, from the, the lighthouse. lighthouse. The lighthouse. Oh, it was the a truth we yes. did yeah. earlier. Yeah. 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 Oh, I see. So it was the light that you that you uh, described earlier, but it's, okay, yeah, I would I would be surprised if a lighthouse could withstand that mm-hmm. kind of a tidal mm-hmm. wave, but for the purposes of the story, yeah, you could see it lift, fly it on. I mean, so. It might be a fancy annihilation lighthouse. Yeah, yeah. Don't know. <laughs> Point is, is, as you look at it, you can see that despite having, you know, crumbled and kind of broken from the impact, it's still standing even if it's at a bit of a tilt. Uh-huh. And you watch as the light turns on, and you actually see it start spinning in a kind of a oblique angle, angle, so an odd axis. I know you all think I'm crazy with seeing lights, but everyone does see that, right? See the lighthouse light that yeah. just came on. Oh wow! Okay, good, because nobody saw the light coming from the monolith, but everyone sees this now. Yes, mm-hmm. I saw okay. it. Not when you I first looked, but I saw it. I saw the light on the monolith too. You saw it? Yeah. Not at the start, but then while we were passing it, yeah, I saw it. You threw your gun at it. Are you hearing the voices too? 
I, I'm I not hearing voices. Listen, man, I am a, not hearing voices. In a world where monsters rip out of cats and things from the ocean are trying to eat us, I'll believe anything. Sure. If but you I saw a door, it. hell, you saw a door. If you're hearing voices, man, I don't doubt it for a second. That's the thing, though. The voices are not people. They're people I know who I know are not here. What? That's well, new. one was. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, this is more evidence that both he and I are losing it than anything else. Ooh, I don't hear voices, though. Uh -oh. okay. Yeah, but I'm dating? seeing stuff, and you're seeing stuff. <coughs> People aren't seeing those things. It is We can't dark. tell, right, because there's no sun. It is dark. Right. The world is dark. Maybe we're just further along than these two are. Did anybody react? Did any of the monsters react to the lighthouse coming on? Ooh, good point. Mm. Um, let's do this. As you guys are having this discussion and kind of talking about who's losing it and what's losing it, you can start to hear the, the regular waves that are coming in, but you also start to hear just the sounds of footsteps. Oh, hell no. As you look behind you and you see hundreds oh, of creatures breaching the water, and they're not running, they're not going fast. They just are kind of, and as soon as they get out of the water enough, they lift themselves up onto their upper segments. And you watch as these centipedal kind of legs start to slowly move forward. Some of them stay low and are moving on all of their small little legs. But you can watch as just they are coming out of the ocean. And once the first ones breach, you see more of them. And it becomes its own sea of creatures cresting out of the water straight into the land. Fucking run. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't really care one way or the other, but if we, if we want to go to the lighthouse, we might as well go now. How close are we? That's the closest structure, I assume. It's, the clo it's closer than the mountain. We gotta go to the lighthouse. Sure. Fine. Howie, your heart still. Yeah. Sure is. Two sixes. Oh, and one. Oh, oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Why don't you describe to me what happens? So, um, uh, so I see this coming, and I'm like, sleds, oxygen tanks, just like the boat. We need to shed some weight. So I take one last big breath of the oxygen. Yeah. And I throw it, boom, and we boom, go. Boom. All four of you just book it yeah. for the lighthouse. Do we still have the bayonet? Yeah, I've got the bayonet still. Okay, great. So you run up to the lighthouse, and like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, you can see it's been pulled up from its foundation a little bit as the water hit it and kind of tilted it towards the water a mm -hmm. little. So you have to go in, and the door is actually slightly in the foundation a bit. And as you wrench it open, you can kind of see that everything's on a bit of a tilt. But you, you know, it is a lighthouse, and besides being recently flooded, so everything's kind of scattered and moved around, um, it seems none the worse for wear. What do you want to do? Go. I, uh, we go up. up. Yeah. Go up. Go in. So as you yeah. close the door behind us. Yes. As you close the door behind you, you run up to the lighthouse, and you get up to the oblique angle, and you can see it just continuing to kind of spin at its weird oblique angle. From the top, you get a much better vantage point of where the monolith is on the. If you're if the the Lighthouse is facing towards the ocean. If you turn the other way to look towards land, you can see the monolith behind you and you watch as all of the creatures kind of come close to the lighthouse and some stop right at the base, leaning into the ocean, and then some fan out and they leave, they leave just a, they don't surround the whole building. They just kind of stop at some point, and almost like the wave with the monolith kind of breaking the wave, the, the lighthouse almost breaks them as they line up like a procession just across with a clear pathway leading straight into the mountain. Mm. They all just stand there. Ah, they're rolling out the welcome wagon. And at that point, 
you kind of watch as some of them lean their head back and they tilt their torsos up forward and they begin to sway in a perfect synchronous manner and they begin to sing and they emit this song, this piercing, wailing sound that is awful to your ears, Kirk. It is awful. Ella, it sounds beautiful. It's lovely. It's odd hat says such harmony, the swaying emotions together as they come into it. And the voices get louder, Carter. They begin to be there and as you look down, you can see these three all dealing with the sound. What do I hear? Yeah, how does it sound to, to you? How does it sound to you? It's awful. The sound is miserable. Yeah. It's not something you've ever wanted to hear in your life. Carter, you, um, as you're watching how we kind of ache in pain and, and Ella, all three are transfixed for a moment. And you, uh, you hear the voices getting louder in your head. I, I, need, I need to go. I need to be away from the rest of you. What do you mean you need to go? You, you, Where are you going to go? The voices are telling me. They're telling me that this is your fault. This is whose fault? Your fault. It's, I know they're not real. They can't be real. I have to be... How can you leave these creatures? They're, te they're telling me... They're telling me... They're trying to push me to hurt you. These horrible creatures. And I'm not going to do it because I know... I know in my right mind that you've you've all tried to help me. Everyone else sees the road that they've made us, right? Yeah. No one else is confused or curious about why in God's name these things just don't swarm this. The, the sheer magnitude of them could probably knock this lighthouse into the ocean right now. Why aren't they doing it? So we just, what, walk out there in the middle of them? My God, I wish they would stop, whatever that noise is. Why, why? They're making such beautiful music. No, they're talking. They're telling me that it's your fault. That oh, it sucks. It sucks like nothing I've never heard. Oh my I've god, heard before. My mom's there too. What? Yeah, she says it's dark. She says it's cold there. I think they're trying to. I don't, I don't know. Beckon us to some sort of afterlife or something. We might already be dead. This is. This might just be all in our heads. I'm gonna pull out the book. Yeah. And I'm going to open to the last page where, mm -hmm. where, uh, like I said in my truth, there's only one thing left to write. Right. And I kind of shake off the noise for a second and I focus on tapping. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's, it's like the sound. It's just trying to get, trying to focus on the book and trying to focus on what I have to write. And it's just in my head and I just write the last words are, um, and they lived happily ever after. And I sign my name and I sign her name in the book and I close it. Yep. And get it. Close that book. Complete. Nada. That. Oh, wow. Nothing and nothing. No, nothing, nothing and nothing. Straight, straight, straight neutral. That's. It's not on the top. It's not on the top? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. All right. Nope. So you write. Oh, okay. How do we resolve this? Because you write it. And it's not like that can be denied of you. But you. What I'm intending to do. Yes. Is close the book. Yeah. And follow the path. Okay. All right. I'm already like an, I know you got it. it. I know okay. what it is. Okay. Great. So here it is. Howie, as you grab your book to finish the project that has taken you most of your life since your wife died mm -hmm. to end, you pull it out and you know that you're going to write this last sentence before you walk into that pathway, but you open the book to find that it is completely waterlogged and stained and everything has, the ink has been smeared and every page is ruined. Nothing is left except for the last blank page in which you write and they lived happily ever after and you sign it 
and you put the book down and you place it in the edge of the lighthouse table. Mm. Five candles, five truths. This is the part of the game in which things get dangerous. Howie, we start with you. You lost the candle, so it is your first truth. Um, even though my eyes see that the book is destroyed and empty, mm -hmm. my memory of the book stays endures. So it's not, even though by the dice it was a failure, to me, it's, I still get to take this, what, when I go will be ethereal object to me and go into whatever afterlife I'm met with to be with That's God. a perfect use of a truth yeah. to help against the dice. Yeah. So, awesome. Um, Ella, you will never see this door. Kirk. Carter does hear his mom. Carter does hear his mom. Ella. The singing is the only comfort I've had since this all started. Okay. Last one. Uh, the moon is changed directions and is now pulling away. Is that something I can say? <laughs> It's a truth. The truth is a truth. Yeah. But you're saying, but the, if I hear you correctly, you're saying that the moon is not heading towards. You said it's now heading away. Yeah. <laughs> and I can even say that this door, which I can see, is flickering now. Like I know there's a limited time window. I get you. I get you. Like we're passing into some new phase. I see what you're saying. Um, the moon, in, and at this point, none of you, I mean, you're not close enough to a monolith to see the door or anything, but I think I can accept that the moon is changing its course. Okay. Because if I hear your intent of your, of your um, truth, it's that you want to say that the 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 time frame of whatever door phenomenon is adjusting. Yeah. But I will tell you that the moon has nothing to do with it. Okay. So if you want, you can say that Carter can see that the door in his mind is flickering and it is fading. If you and this want. is the door that's on the mountain that's Yes. In the direction of this path. Yes, the pathway that is being laid before you. I'm like, oh, we need to go. The choice has been made for us. Uh, we just have to follow along. Uh, I'll give um, Ella the bayonet and say, hey, uh, you're going to be a lot more, this is going to be a lot more use to you than me. I don't even know how much more time I got left. I think I'm just gonna stay here a while and listen to the music. All right, and I give it to, uh, I, I, at this point, everybody gets to make their own choice and I respect that. <clears throat> uh, Howie has been about time, the time, and he, he, Howie didn't finish the book because he wanted every second, but looking out in front of him to what he sees, he understands that he's out of time. So he makes that final act to to tell himself it's okay. It's whatever okay. whatever comes next, it's okay. All right. So I'll hand him and I say, you still got a little fight left in you? I'll give him the bayonet and I'll go, let's go see what's in that monolith. Um, 
Kirk, Howie, Carter, you make yourself out of the monolith or out of the lighthouse and you start walking and you weren't far when you were mentioning a procession as you stand out of the lighthouse you can see they're just lined up making a perfect wall on either side of you and you can see they aren't making a direct pathway but they just seem to be splitting in a way and if you were to bother enough to get on a step ladder and look out over you could see that they are extending all around but really all you see is the cold bodies of these creatures just swaying together most of them lifting their heads up and just seem to be swaying and at first you can the ones that are closest to you as you first lead into it, you can hear the sounds of whispers. And I don't know if you even want to look at them or if you would just rather keep your head down and forward. But it's eerie. I mean, obviously, it's painful for the people who I've described that it is painful for. Yeah, I'm just looking dead ahead. And go. Trying, to, trying my best to keep my composure as this... Because obviously it's... If it was loud in there, it's it's deaf. very loud. Yeah, it's, yeah. So uh, it's 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 like white noise almost at this point. You're like ringing. So I'm yeah. just I'm just trudging forward with Actually, the. The only thing that's helping is the gunshots that probably have given you a little bit. Yeah, a little tinnitus. A little tinnitus. Yeah. Yeah. So and you've stayed behind. And Ella, yeah. you. So before we leave, I'll give her a hug and I'll say good luck. Yeah. Are you sure this is what you want? We've been a team so far, and the team's made it this far. I don't know if we should split up now. It's just so beautiful. I just want to sit here and listen. You can listen along the way. Put a little, that'll put a little smile on my face, a little smirk. <laughs> so, Ella, as you leave with Kirk, as you come down the steps, and he convinces you that whatever you can do, we can all do together. So you come down, and you walk out the door, and you start to step away from the lighthouse. You can feel them. You can hear the impacts of the ground as they close in behind you and you can feel the pressure almost just the presence of them just just filling the void that you are creating when you step forward and every once in a while you can occasionally feel a soft just tentacle just brisk your hair on the back of your neck or slightly shove your shoulder and knock your knock yourself forward a little bit. And it's upsetting that they are doing nothing other than just fucking with you, pushing you and prodding you. And everyone else since you seem to be the one in the behind at the moment, they just press and push as you move towards the mountain. Carter. You, uh, begin this walk with the three others. And I've mentioned that the voices are loud, and I don't need to say that to you again. But... Does Carter have long hair like you do? Sure. Okay. You can feel something, Carter, and when you attempt to move some of your hair back away from your ear, you can actually feel something like a large... Ah, uh, well... Yeah, yeah. So you kind of pull your hair back, you feel, and you hear hand bumps into something, 
And at first you worry that maybe it's one of the tentacles that mm -hmm. have been potting and prodding and poking at Ella, but you feel a tiny hand grasp a hold of your finger for a second. As I try to brush it away. So you try to brush it away and it kind of grabs your hand and it holds onto your finger and kind of keeps close to your neck and it goes shh, 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 shh. You're wasting your time. I'm the worst fighter out of any of these people, and I don't have any weapons. But you know you could. You have the advantage. No, I don't. Why? Why you watched as your precious Lola just was ripped apart? You know. You, you need to. You need to get better at this. If this is your temptation game. I don't particularly care about any of these people that much, but I don't. I don't want to hurt them either. What if I told you that I can pull your mother from the dark? I'd say that you're a liar. I can show you. Everything you ask me makes me think about what are you why what are your motivations? What are you gonna what are you gonna get out of it? You want me to hurt these people, so therefore I don't want to hurt them. It's opposite's day, okay? Fine. And you kind of hear as the presence disappears for a moment as you walk away and you feel as it kind of flutters out of your existence and at that point Ella you feel as a tentacle wraps around your neck and it shoves you back down onto the ground and throps you right onto the floor and you as you feel air just pull out from front of you as you feel your body slam down onto the ground and you all three hear and turn as Ella is just laid there. Nothing has laid onto her. Nothing has pulled her in yet. They are just using, and there's several of them that just seem to have their appendages all just clasped around her and they just seem to be strangulating her with all effort. Let's help her. I'm done. I'm done with these guys. I'm I'm running. I'm running and sliding over to her, and I'm just gonna hold the bayonet against one of their tentacles as a threat for them to fuck off. All right. I'm trying to actively uncoil the tentacles. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm grabbing the the crutch and trying to pry anything I can off with the crutch. Okay, pry everything off with the crutch. Um, let's do. Probably screaming at this point because the noise is so loud. It's so loud. It is so loud. I'm just um, kind of glazed over while I'm doing it. I'm not particularly emotional, but I'm... Right, so, Kirk, you're, you're the one that's trying to say something, right? It sounds like it's just you want to threaten, you want to yep. cut one of these. So let's have you go. Um, no. No okay. ones. One six. So, all right. You, um... <laughs> what do you want to say? Give me that one. No, I'm just not. <laughs> um, I run over and I baseball pop up, slide, slide along the ground, come up to one knee, have my hand on her shoulder. She's laying down, and I just put put the yeah. bayonet right next to the tentacle, and I don't say anything. Yeah, it knows it, that I'm pissed off. Right, it knows that I'm done with this shit. I don't have to say anything. Right. I just look at them, and the tentacle that I'm threatening yeah. slowly releases. Slowly releases, and at that point, you can hear, and it's not even a secret at this point, you can hear it, and it seems to be coming from a thousand mouths in a thousand different directions all around you, and it just says, Kirk, she's not worth it. You know she's not. Why? Let her go. To go and claim what is yours. She is a horrible person. You've seen what she's done. Let her die. Not today. Not right now. This team's not leaving anyone behind. All right. And you, Ella, feel that the one that he threatened pulled away a little bit, but these creatures have not let you go by any stretch of the imagination, but they do begin to walk with the three of you together, 
and you've uncoiled enough to where it's not clasping around her throat, but you feel as if your whole body has been wrapped inside of cloth and you're just being dragged. And occasionally you'll get your feet up from underneath you to make a step, but you are being dragged in the dirt along this pathway. So I'm trying to help her stay standing yeah. while this is all going on. I'm like, wow, these... Mm-hmm. Ah, the new management is not really good about boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> let's just keep going. Yep. Let's, let's, uh, see this let's pick up the pace. Maybe they want a bit brisker of a walk out of us, and I kind of look at look at the group of them in a bit of disgust, and then drop the drop the crutch down in the sand and just keep they moving. They don't want us to all get there together. They want they open this path. They want at least one of us to get where we're going, but they don't want all of us there. Wow. Right. So, they don't want all of us there. So let's so make sure it's all going. Us. Okay. You uh, continue to move and you continue to do the walk and they continue to be incredibly rough with L as they move kind of forward up into the mountains and you don't feel much more resistance from them as you continue to climb up and up and up and Ella at this point you're getting bumped and bruised what's going on in your mind you're you're if not what is happening with you at the moment like being dragged through like these three are with you but what's what's going on in your mind right now well i'm trying to reconcile these horrible creatures who made this beautiful music that comforted me uh-huh. and are now abusing me and parading me around like a ragdoll prisoner. Uh-huh. And I'm, it's snapping me out of that haze I was in listening to the beautiful music. Right. And I think that I'm starting to hear it for what it is. Sure. Okay. You're seeing through the veil of the song a little? Yeah. Right? Do you Um, want to know what it sounds like beyond the veil? Yes. It is the wailing of voices. It is the screaming of agony dressed up like a Sunday choir. It is not the irritating, baleful sound that they hear, but it is just the voices of those in agony behind a beautiful noise. I can even hear voices I've heard before. Several. People whose family members I may have lost Mm -hmm. on the table. Everyone you... I won't say it's everyone you've ever known, but you know that they are sounds that you have been through. And it is with that you are taken up to the mountainside. You're presented in front of the monolith, and at that point, you look and see that the mountain, the pillar in front of you is just still close, but also so far away. And at that stage, you can feel the ground begin to shake, and you can begin to feel as just the Build in the building. The the actual island itself is starting to crest as an earthquake of like you have never seen. And your life just begins to shake and move around you, and the creatures begin to wail and move, and they begin to slowly kind of push, almost like a mop that's losing control at the moment, just begins to kind of shove and push you all forward, and at that point, you can hear the crunching and the cracking of cartilage and bone as you look behind you, and you can see, shh, 
as rocks just begin to cascade and fall as you look down onto the beach of which you were not terribly far down much earlier is now just cresting as a giant gray wall pockmarked and cratered with all of what it continues to be which is the moon is moving at the speed of a jetliner just crunching straight into the sea and you can see it's already on the beach and you're watching as like bodies are being lifted up in front of it and being thrown away like so much ants as someone's sho putting a shovel to it as they're being flown up in every direction and you Ella lose your balance and feel as the creatures begin to start tugging on you anew as their desperate flee in different directions is drawing and quartering you at the moment. One, one. No sixes. Do you have anything left to burn? Kirk, <clears throat> Howie Carter, as you look around you, you begin to just see as the creature is now the bestial side of them just starts to kick in as they all just start scattering in every direction. And at that point, you hear Ella scream as you look towards her and see that several creatures have attempted to move in different directions. And the one that has most of its tentacles around her um, pulls away from one direction, but it, you see as one of the creatures just is like turned away, almost of it as it doesn't want to go in the same direction, yet it pulls itself, and Ellis screams as you hear the tearing of muscles and clothes and skin as Ella, you feel your body ripped and torn, and that is the moment in which the veil is pulled back and you can hear the curtain for what it is, the agonizing screams and the wails that you understand are behind this song and your own screams of agony are mixed alongside of it as you feel first the joint pop out from your arm and then you feel the muscle tear as your arm is pulled off of your shoulder and you can feel your leg being pulled apart as these creatures are laying into you and Howie Carter and Kirk you can only watch in horror as these creatures are, you're just trying not to get trampled at this moment, but this silhouette of her being drawn and quartered or pulled apart as finally her head just pops right off and all of the creatures just scatter as the just tension is pulled away and you are left trying to ride the wave as these creatures are scuttling all around you. Ella, you, we discussed this curtain, but they say that when the head separates the body, that there is a few, few moments in which blood and electricity still flow through the brain, enough for a passing conscious thought. What is the last thing that goes through her mind as life has parted from her. I hope I see Athena where I'm going. Denise, thank you for playing. It's all over now. No more. It can all stop. All right? Thank you for all of your hard work and all of your efforts. You've made it this way and you've got to see the end. So thank you. We'll see you soon. Yeah, we all will.
four candles, four truths. Ella would normally be able to speak the first truth in this circumstance, but since she is no longer with us, we will speak it for her instead. The moon reaching the shore of this island has slowed its pace significantly. Kirk. Something here wants to speak to us. Carter? Hmm. I'm really drawing a blank. Yeah. Yeah. Um. There's a lot going on, what we are. Yeah. Certainly coming to an end clause. What, in your mind, serves Carter's best story on the pathway it's taken? It sounds like Carter has made a decision about what the intent of these things are. So yeah. The well, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they want. I just know that I don't want to help them. I want to be defiant. And what does defiance look like in Carter's mind for that can speak itself into a truth? How can you continue this story of hope and defiance? Okay, well, here's, here's the truth, is that no matter what this thing that wants to speak with us or this meeting that's being set up with us, I've already made up my mind that I'm going to deny it. You've made up your mind that you will deny whatever it's asking of you. There's absolutely nothing it can say that I will agree to. Great. Howie. We are the last three human beings on Earth. Okay. Four candles, four truths. The rodeo around you of the bulls just continuing to just purse around you. It's enough to stay up on your feet to have these things just crawling and moving inside of you. And you can see just a wall of dirt and water and Dust is just being kipped up in front as if not unlike when your ship breached ground. Think of that on a planetary scale. Yeah. At least as far as you can see water just shoring up all around it on either side of the island. But when it begins to hit dirt, you can actually see as just, just dirt is flying everywhere. It's just the monumental force of this celestial body digging into the crust is just insane. What I mean, I'm not running. I'm moving almost at a sort of spitefully, like slow I'm slow pace. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going any slower than these two, but I'm certainly not, not putting any hustle into this at all. And then attempt to not get trampled by the creatures around you. Okay. Yeah, it's not my biggest priority, but uh, so. Oh, oh, holy shit. Wow, I did well, get one, you got three, three sixes, sixes and a one. one, one. Nicely done. Although three sixes does not traditionally <laughs> bode well. Uh, oh, is that bad? No. <laughs> well, <I> just, <laughs> no, I'm just impressed. <laughs> uh, just metal? Yes. Yeah. Uh, metal AF. Uh, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Too much metal for one hand. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, Thanks, Carter, Beast. I imagine you, and uh, I imagine you are just like a calm in a storm. You're walking forward. I'm kind of like just almost like just like despondent or like just I'm just kind of limping forward like you know with my arms at my sides. Mm -hmm. I'm almost just kind of like just dragging myself there. There's no emotion Understood. or anything. Great. Uh, Howie and Kirk, are you like running with the bulls? So uh, to speak. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm. I'm like at this point. I'm. I'm helping him along. Yeah, and I'm. I'm using whatever crutch I can. Like if something, because right. they're not actively attacking us, but if something gets in the way, I'm just whacking it out of the way at this right. point, trying to move as fast as we can. 
to get out of the rodeo, right. basically. So you're heading, still moving straight towards any break that you can create. And you do kind of see that there is a bit of a canyon divide of where things can go alongside the mountain or they can go up more. And you can see that some creatures are doubling back around. But more importantly, there's just this fissure that is um, that you could ostensibly get on top of that's a little too tall. You could climb up it if you wanted to just to get away from most of the creatures who are taking the path of least resistance. By taking a path of more resistance, you'll be able to get up. Yeah, at this point, I'll, I would rather, and I, I don't know if you guys would rather, but I would rather take my chances climbing a mountain than surviving in a sea of monsters. Right. I'm going to have to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do still have the rope. Do you want to, someone want to make the first climb and then use the haul rope up? I mean, uh, I mean, I can go up first. Yeah, I'm not going to be good as a point man on this. No. So, yeah, if anything, one I should of us probably take the tail in case I should fall. I don't Kurt, pull anyone with me. Go and climb up the mountainside as the ground is shaking around you, as the moon is pushing itself straight into the body around you. Ooh, oh. Okay. Nope. Okay. Inspirational. <laughs> This is an inspirational moment. And for the record, for the record, yep. this is a hell of a feat. Yep. It is a selfless act of athleticism, if an extraordinary feat. So not only will this get rid of two ones, but if this succeeds, I damn near think this might be a qualifier for your hope dice. You got this. You got this. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> we believe in you. Yes! <laughs> I can't see it in the candles. What did it get? Six, six, six and, and a three. three. Yeah, buddy! And a three. Motherfucking Kirk! All right, man. Coming in clutch with the, with the halftime oh, speech. Please, please. <sighs> Holy shit. And narrate to me oh. how this <laughs> moment goes down. So I'm trying to climb up these rocks so I can get in position to throw the ropes down. Right. Um, but uh, I slip. Yeah. And uh, I uh, fall pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and I hit my shoulder on a on a rock. Okay. And I dislocate it. This doesn't sound like success. Oh, so but far. wait, we're getting I'm ready for it. I know. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Go for Act two conflict. <laughs> this isn't the first time being a football player. I've dislocated my shoulder. Right. So, in pain, I put my arm back yeah. behind my head and I grab my wrist and pull it to the other side <sighs> and pop it back in. <laughs> <sighs> Amazing. And I uh, shake it off. I'm used to playing through the pain. I grab that rope. I wrap it around my good arm and I get my ass up the side of that mountain. And for once in a long time, you looked at something and you said, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. And I'm going to do something that is, despite the fear, going to allow me to succeed. So that's for you. It succeeds on a five or six mm -hmm. moving forward. Nice job. Your moment has been fulfilled. So Kirk, you get up and you lash this rope across whatever spire of rock that you can put together, you can still see the mangled corpse of Ella not far from where you left her, where it was. And you also see Carter and Howie below you as well, too, as you throw the rope down in you two while still feeling the impacts of creatures just doing everything they can to get out of the way of what is coming. Mm -hmm. Just climb up the rope. And you, you, from a vantage point, you can definitely see that the rock wall and the dirt that is just moving forward and the darkening cloud that is your horizon now is, I mean, even if you wanted to, you couldn't go any other direction but just straight ahead at this point. It's not unlike an all-consuming dark wall. <laughs> hmm. You uh. All right. Well, you go. You go up next, bud. 
Yeah. yeah. Or, or are we up? Yeah, they're all, they're all, we're all up. up. His, oh, we're all his up. success okay. allowed everybody to go on the rope. So, and you get up to the top and you begin to climb as you get close to the monolith. And as you begin to look around and you see there's occasionally a creature who will just, you know, is confused and kind of running around, but they do seem to be more like that that harmonious kind of synchronicity that they were doing earlier it just seems to be all be gone now. And every once in a while, you'll have to hide behind a rock as one of them will just <laughs> and then skitter along as it continues to move across. In a weird, like, frenzied kind of just state? Just in a frenzied state. So, um, in fact, Howie, at one point, you actually are moving across as you're kind of slowly, sneakily, just trying to make your way from, from cover to cover to cover, trying to make sure that you don't get caught by one of these things now that they seem to just be all hell's broken loose for them. And uh, I think these two probably have to remind me to duck at various po points because I'm right. I'm, Maybe the old whoop. a lot of my yeah. self preservation has just kind of gone out the window now. Right. I'm just kind of apathetic. So Howie, what do you want to do at this stage? Um, what do we look like? So we're the monolith is in front of us. That is what we were walking towards. Yeah, and you can tell that it's in the in the mountainside, but there is definitely what looks to be some cave systems that maybe it could take you into the mountain to get closer to where the the plinth is, you know? You guys don't see that uh, door anymore, do you? Do we? Not where you are immediately, no. Well, I guess we should go into those caves. Yeah. All right. Well. Looking a little woozy. Yeah, you are. So how we, uh, I think you're the one that needs to, make sure to not get caught and make it while Carter's self-preservation is in place. Um, as you're kind of moving from, from rock to rock, you kind of stick your head up and you can see that one of them is just kind of, just like a sentry, just whipping its head every once in a while. And you can see that it's looking with human eyes. Can I ask, uh, are they, are the ones up here in place to guard the monolith? Or are they just there as now natural and happy? These ones feel just like chaotic, just creatures that are trying to s either attack anything that could get in its way or self-preservation. And how far from the entrance to the cave are we? I mean, you can make a mad dash for it at this okay. point, or you could sneakily trying to go into it if you want. So what do you want to do? I would like to take the crutch. Yeah. And with everything I've got from behind a rock, just chuck Try it. Try to create it. a distraction and chuck it in the opposite direction. Okay. Chuck it. Chuck it. Chuck it. Chuck it. Ew. Oh. Oh, Pop no. a candle out. All right. Successes. <clears throat> oh, boy. It's all right. I know what goes on. Uh, Howie, as you chuck this thing, you kind of watch as it clatter, 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 runs across, and you all three just run for everything you're worth and you just move and you hustle it as you go into it and Howie at some point... Oh, wait, can I burn something? There was no, no, there was ones, no ones. Oh, God, you're throw. right. Yeah, that's when my unlucky... That's why I have all my pictures that's still. Because <laughs> no ones at this point. <laughs> but as you've been running, you kind of feel as your gut just like it finally is just so much pain and you double over and you kind of crumble down onto your knees. Mm -hmm. Kirk grabs you and he pulls you up but not before the creature who... <laughs> kind of looked back towards you after hearing you crumple down and now is kind of upon you. You all three run for a time and get into the cave systems, but you can see this one is right on your heels, right behind you. And at some point you see, well, you see the monolith in front of you. And Kirk, you are... Your fall has left you. Well, we'll leave those for the truth. You get there. The failure is that you get there, but the creature is hot on your heels. Okay. All right. Three candles, three twos. The world is dark. The world is always dark. Howie, you do have the first truth since it was your dice that failed. Um, they see the door. Yes, that is the truth. Um, Robert is blocking the door. Kirk, you're up. 
Last truth. Robert's one of them. Three candles, three truths. We begin this story, the beginning of the end, as you run towards the monolith and <laughs> what is seen as is, you see the black plinth in front of you, just the sheer black face in front of you. And two creatures are on either end of what is a broken spire of just rock laid into it. And um, Robert is there. He's standing in front of a glistening yellow doorway in which the both of you see. And Robert turns and he kind of looks to all three of you and how you rush in with this thing hot on your heels and as you kind of are coming forward you feel a tentacle just wrap around your leg and lift you up like a plucked chicken and similar to Ella just kind of wanders into the area right in front of you and as you Look ahead, Carter, you see just something on Robert's shoulder. And do you recognize it? It is the thing that came out of Lola. Oh, God. Just standing right there on his shoulder. And he looks to you. Well, this is a familiar sight. His voice has completely changed. It's now dark and resonant, and it seems to echo on <laughs> itself as he is, he is speaking from several directions all in one place. Is this your big villain monologue? Is this where you tell us what this was all about, how you have remaking the world in your image or some stupid shit like that? I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't give a fuck. All this is all a waste. Not only that, you hurt my fucking cat. Got her. So you're gonna kill me? Fucking do it. You're wrong. I'm not going to kill you. What is it, Kirk? Do you see the door? I don't know. I'm currently suspended, getting dangled by right. a leg right. upside down with a bunch of blood rushing to my head. Okay. Um, what the hell's going on here, Robert? Are you Robert? Is that even your name? No, it's not my name. What's going on is that you are the last three humans on this entire earth. Millennia of decisions have come down to these last moments. It's a, something I was quite looking forward to being here myself for, frankly. You could say that this is a bit of a going away party for me. So thank you for being here. No, Carter. Was this all for your own pleasure? Do you answer to some other higher power? I don't feel like I have to answer that, Carter. And isn't that the greatest question that mankind has been asking for its entire existence? What do you think? I don't care anymore. I just want, mm. I just want you to fail. Mm. All right then. He takes a step to the side and looks towards the door and looks towards you, Carter. Then go ahead. Go in. And what's that supposed to do? He gives you the same shrugging look that you gave him as he motions towards the prospect. Why don't you go through first? So shall be and you kind of watch as he turns around and takes the creature from his hand, looks at it, puts it on his other shoulder, and walks directly into the yellow light. I don't know if this is one of those things where he's expecting us to kill each other 
or the only, the only Last of Us Left rules over whatever the new world is. Who knows? It could be all sorts of things. But I just, I don't want to give him the pleasure. And what do we do? I am st still suspended by a tentacle. Yeah. Yes, you are absolutely still oh, suspended yeah, oh, by a tentacle. Should, okay. But I mean, yeah. it hasn't killed me. No, it has so. simply dangled you like such meat. Yeah, as it's holding you up. I want to call back out to Robert. I want to see if he comes out. You call out to Robert, while how <laughs> I'd like to think that you're slowly turning in like a circle at this. Point. Yeah, like. As you like can see, like it never really settles. It just yes. always slowly rotates. It's always right. slowly turning. <laughs> yeah. And um, you crawl out to Robert, and you hear no answer. You hear no answer at all. I mean, I'm... Jeez, I'm breaking down the possibilities here. We could kill ourselves. Uh, although... Saying it out loud, it sounds like not a very good idea. No. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, I'm kind of scared. If if this if the afterlife is anything like this, then I'll yell out to Kurt uh, and and Carter like like can't be worse than what than what's going on here. Go for the door. You kind of. But is okay. that isn't that what he wants us to do? Is to go through this door? Is there only one? Is, is there just one? That's, there's the there one that's one? holding him. Uh huh. And then there's two. And there's two that guarding are the door. Flanked on either side of the monolith of the door. right now. Okay. And what is the distance here? I would say, let's make it a perfect triangle. Okay. So one, two, door, center, Howie, creature. Okay. Can I see the door now, or am I still without door vision? <sighs> Do we have door sign? Yes, you can see the door. For what it's worth, you're not crazy. I could see the door. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, hold on. If any, if if it is a thing where going through makes us like the rulers of the new world or whatever, Kirk, I think you should go. For, you should go through first, <laughs> unless you don't want to. I mean, if you want, I'll go first. If if I'm going through that door, it's I'm going through with both of you. So we need to get him down. Okay. I still have the bayonet. Do you hear that, Robert? We're going to come through your stupid door, but we're coming together. So t tell your tentacle bros to back off our friend. That'd be nice. Whoa. Nothing happens. The creature stays there. In fact seems to be agitated by your words. All right, can you help me? We, we, gotta, we gotta cut this tentacle off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to like do a sweet sit up probably and too high. Un unravel so this my thing. Thoughts, but my thought is that I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I got no core strength. I'm gonna, do, uh, well, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. run and jump and wrap myself around the tentacle and use my weight to try to bring it down. You use the bayonet to try to chop through it. <sighs> okay. Chopping or wrapping? <laughs> yeah, what's, what poison? <laughs> or getting at. You know, like I'm, I'm rolling for him it. rapping. No, rolling for you chopping. 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 For me chopping. Oh, I'm great at the rapping, as you as you may know if you pick up my my mixtape. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not even a single one. So you feel <laughs> as uh, this is nervous laughter, by the way. This oh, is, I know. If you've ever been around me in times of crisis, <laughs> this know. is how I get like a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> you wrap, bear hug this tentacle as you kind of drag it down to the ground, and Kirk, you just take the bayonet and just like yeah, you like that cutting a piece of string. You just like just cut it right and slip it, and you feel as it just like falls down to the ground, just slides around and off of Howie and just starts flopping onto the ground. The creature just <laughs> just lifts its head back as if it was doing nothing up until you cut it. And then you feel as its other appendages just lift up and it grabs a hold of both you and Carter and pulls you in and attempts to just ingest you with its terrible, terrible lamprey-like jaw. All right. Oh, not great. Two fives and a two. Fuck. 
And I can't burn one of these, right? Because those no are only getting rid of ones. Fuck. Okay. That's it. <sighs> I mean, I was wrestling with it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I kind of deserve what I get. You did good, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How he thanks you. He killed my <coughs> damn cat. Yeah, I'd have done the same thing. Okay, Carter. This trance-like state of this creature just seems to just be just chalked out of whatever reverie that it was in and it just seems to come in with a new nature even though you've cut Howie down from this it grabs both of you but at some point Kirk it's you're pulling it off but Carter it grabs a hold of it and it just with one fell swoop it pulls you in directly into its lamprey like mouth and it just kind of takes you in waist first in one single hit mm -hmm. as it just pulls onto you but you have both of your hands on either side of its teeth as you kind of feel its teeth just just grating not piercing you not puncturing you or ingesting you but mm -hmm. just grabbing you like moving me down so many little tendrils and fingers pulling you down and at some point you feel or hear flutter more than anything <laughs> as this thing lands onto your shoulder again and you hear Robert's voice just lay into you as you're going into it goes how does it feel to be right Carter how does it feel to be right but so wrong at the same time you had your chance and now you get to be collected like so many others your choice is made. Now bathe in it. As you feel each little muscle punctuate, you feel as your body is just ingested in one fluid motion as you are sucked into this thing. The creature that is with you, I mean, this is not an instantaneous thing, this process of which Howie and Kirk, because Howie falling down from the ground, but Kirk more worried about picking up Howie at this point than even not even noticing and going into it. I mean, Carter, you say with spite in your heart that you want this thing to fail. Mm -hmm. What is it? And why do you hate it so much? I feel like it's a, it's a manifestation of my own, like there's things I see in it when I look at it and like even the way that Robert talks, Yeah, it reminds me of like that voice in my head telling me that like I'm not good enough or you know, no one cares about me or any of that kind of stuff. So it, it has that voice of my own like self out and I hate it because I hate that part of myself. All of your hopes and despair wrapped up into one single four-winged creature with the voice of self-deprecation Yeah, as you are pulled into its maw. Yep. Alright. Good luck, y'all. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> I got eated. Bye-bye. You got eated. <laughs> Bye-bye. Uh, yeah. Well, Kirk. He, Kirk. How are you, me, bud? Two candles. Two candles. Two truths. Carter would normally speak. Instead, I will just say the world is dark. And... Only one of you may go through the door. Who gets the last truth? Kirk. <sighs> 
someone comes out of the door, and it's not Robert. And it's not Robert. It's not Robert. Okay. Do you want me to say who it is? Because I have someone in mind. How about instead of saying, and as part of your truth, mm -hmm. I, truths are like genie's wishes. Mm -hmm. They need to be phrased in a certain way to become true. Got so it. you could say, so and so comes out the door. Okay. Do you want me to do that? If you, that's how you want to phrase your truth. Okay. Um, how his wife comes out of the door. Oh, okay. man, don't do that. Come on. Okay. All right. It is a truth. Two candles, two truths. We are still in the situation that was right before Carter was consumed. And Howie and Kirk, you do notice as Howie, you were picked up off of the ground and lifted up by Kirk. You hear the scuttling of the legs as the creature that was holding you, Howie, backs out of the cave and folds into darkness so that only you two and the two guardians are left. And at this point, the rumbling of the land has been almost a passive element at this point. But you know that the moon is coming and it is not far from your destination where you are now. The light of this monumental place was originally illuminated by a small break in the ceiling, which gave you a little bit of natural light. But now the actual structure of the moon itself is so high above that whatever little starlight that you had as part of your guiding or whatever natural light is still left in this dark, awful world is now only being lit by the yellow light of the doorway. Howie, you take both of you a few moments to stare at this thing. Yeah, I just, I have to come, I have to let the blood rush back down from my brain. Like, I'm a little disoriented coming down off that. But if I'm seeing what he described. Your wife walking through the door. I can't, like, in my current state, it has to be trauma. That's what's going through my head. Like, this can't be real. She died years ago. Like, she didn't, she wasn't taken. And she died. And she died. You hear her voice before you actually see her, before you see this body step through. And it is a voice that is soft and comforting and familiar. And it is, she says, Howie, Howie, you've done so good. You made it. You made it. You got all the way to the end of your quest. Kirk, thank you. You made a choice. And now you have to make another one. One of you gets to come with me. And the other one gets to watch the world end. Do you... Do you know her? Uh, it's... That's my wife. You can see her? I would, I'd drop to my knees. I, I... She kind of walks up to you and she puts her hand out. And when she takes yours, you can feel that it is well and truly real. There is, there is warmth behind these hands that are touching her. And she looks to you, Kirk, and says, I'm, I'm so sorry for everything, but, <laughs> 
these things aren't simple, and the game is never always fair. <clears throat> You've faced every challenge at this point, and you have never deviated from what is right and what is wrong. You've never had malice, and you've never had spite in your heart. You've never been vindictive, and you've never killed or taken an innocent life. But there is only room for one of you left. Everyone else is here. Everyone else is waiting. So there is one last sacrifice to be made. I know. It's not a choice. I can't ask you to stay here and watch the world end, man. You're not gonna have to. What does that mean? I'm staying. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, part of him wants to go, but he, he, uh, uh, man, as much as how he would, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, if, if he were at full strength, he'd fight you about it. Like he would physically try to overcome you to put you on the, through that door. How close he does not you? have the, the strength. To close do. enough that you could do exactly what he's describing to him if I'm you wanted him to. I'm pushing him in the door. I'll fight it every every inch of the way. Roll it. You said it yourself. You can't fight it. You're weak. You are one and one. The brink. <laughs> They have seen your heart is pure and invite you to join your friends. This is the best, worst brink because the brink is normally when you are at your lowest, but this is when you are at your best. So re-roll all of them. All of them, even the hope dice. God damn it. <sighs> Kirk, as you grab a hold of Howie. And you look towards his wife and you look towards him. You take his body and you shove him against the side of the monolith and how he grabs the edge for all of its worth and he holds on to the barrier with everything he's got and you can feel both of your muscles cord and tense as Howie is just using every ounce of strength that he possibly can imagine as he pushes and holds against it and Kirk, you do something. You do something you've never done in your life. You've never even thought of this before, but you grab a hold of Howie's head and you wrench his head back and you punch him right in his damaged ribs, in his bleeding and how you double over in pain as he pushes you through into the doorway and you tumble into nothing. Fuck. At this point, the last thing I will tell you is, is that you, last thing you see before you fall into the yellow light around you is you see the look on Kirk's face, which is both grateful and sorry at the same time. And that's the exact same look uh, he sees back in mine. 
Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. One candle, one truth. The final scene is Kirk having shoved Howie straight through this yellow gate. He watches both the guardians sitting on either side of this monolith just crumble and turn to ash. You look at them and they're there one moment and they're gone the next. And you can feel the ground beneath you rumbling as you walk out of the cave, leaving the monolith behind you. The yellow door turned to black as soon as Howie went through. And as you come out of the cave entrance from where the second to last human on earth left, you go out and you see the moon. This giant celestial body just cresting into the area above you and you can start to feel the dust and the wind and the rock just starting to roll around you and you know that you are the only person in the world ever to have witnessed such a phenomenon like this. It is one for the annals of history, whatever that means. Kirk, what is the last thought of the last human in the last moments that this world has to offer? I know I'm in the right place because for the first time in a long time, it was my decision to be there. And that is the purest intonation of free will that one could describe upon the face of two celestial bodies coming together to merge into a single form. And the dust envelops you. And there is no more story to tell. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Before we get to the last messages of our dearly departed characters, I just want to say one last thing is, is that hope is a beautiful thing. Hope can carry you through the darkest of times and can turn everything into something. There is a world in which if there is no hope and there is only despair and hatred and bitter emotions that we all have towards each other that we will fall upon each other and consume each other and turn this world into nothing. But with hope and with perseverance and with drive, 
wonderful things can happen. Every corner is a new opportunity to find the light and go towards it. And as they say in so many books and stories, that the night is darkest just before the dawn. And with that, we will listen to the messages of our dearly departed characters. Hi there. My name is Howie Bell, and I am, well, I was, the proud owner of a small game store in an even smaller town in northeastern Pennsylvania. It was one of my wife and I's dreams from the day we met. Own a game store, write an RPG, and have three kids. Turns out kids were never going to be in the cards for us, but we did get to check the game store off that list. What a time that was. Life was perfect. And then she was gone. I'm not quite sure how much time I've got left, how much time any of us have left, but with the time I do have, I'm gonna make good on that one last dream. I'm gonna finish our story, baby. It's almost there. And when it is, I'll come find you, wherever you are, and we can play together, forever. I love you, Bex. I'll see you soon. A goal without a plan is just a wish. That's <laughs> something my old high school coach used to tell us all the time. And when you're just a dumb high school kid, you think it's nothing more than some kind of fortune cookie Jedi mind trick they sell you just so you practice harder. But after seeing a massive explosion back towards home, it reminded me of another quote. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I sure did, but I took a hiccup in my life and I turned it into a hurdle. And it got to a point where I, it was easier for me to motivate other people than it was to motivate myself. Look, I know things suck right now and they don't seem like they're gonna get any better and they may not, they may not. But, damn it, you gotta try. Find something deep in yourself and make yourself better. They make everything else around you better. And that can be hard to do, but sometimes action requires bravery. Sometimes it requires thought. But life requires action. Because if you don't, a goal without a plan is just a wish. There probably isn't anything left to go back to, right? It's been weeks now. Without our meds, without power, Mom, Mom is dead, right? At least Lucy would try to make a hiding spot for all the cats from the cafe. I mean, plenty of them were fresh off the streets anyway. They'll settle into their patterns and live through this. Lola here, she needs help though. She didn't mean to be stranded on this boat. And her kittens will be here soon. I'm glad the other passengers left. They might have taken most of the resources, but I won't miss them. They were loud and impatient. And so obviously selfish. I get it. We have a drive to survive. Have some dignity, though. I I'm as scared as anyone, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep that inside. Lola doesn't need anything more to worry about. I just want her to have her kitten somewhere safe. We'll take it from there. Hi. I'm Ella. Ella Sanchez. Apparently the only one left running this medical barge. Uh, we picked up some survivors on a cruise ship, and that went well until they found out we were going to pick up survivors who were sending out a beacon, which was something else in this day and age. Things aren't working. Uh, anyway, there was a bit of a an argument, and... The crew fought off the survivors we had picked up. Most of them didn't make it. And then the survivors took off with our last lifeboats. There's just me and a few people left. Uh, heading towards the signal. I, I don't know where we go from here. I'm not 
great with people. I'm great with medicine. I've tried relationships. No one could ever understand what I was going through or hear the most depraved things human beings could do to each other, to the innocent and defenseless. Best friend I ever had was my cat, Athena. She just listened and never tried to fix. Now I don't know where she is. Son of a bitch, the only thing I care about is her. In the end, the one I miss most is my damned cat. All I know is that I was put on this earth to save. And save I will. Until someone stops me. <laughs>